Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, home of the Eskimos in their 11 CFL championships. Fall is in the air, and that means Great Cup fever isn't far behind. Welcome you to tonight's venue. This is Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The CFL on ESPN2, our matchup tonight, the Mad Dogs of Memphis taking on the Edmonton Eskimos. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. We welcome you to this evening's telecast. And as we look forward to tonight's game, we must talk about the two quarterbacks who will face off in this game. First of all, for Edmonton, Kerwin Bell. You may remember last year, Bell was a backup to David Archer in Sacramento. He came in this year, tried to establish himself as the number one, but wasn't dominating. So he split time on frequent occasion with Chris Fargus until about the last two games, especially the last one against the BC Lions, a 39-36 win for Edmonton in overtime, a game in which Kerwin Bell threw for 395 yards. Well, Damon Allen on the other side of the football for the Memphis Mad Dogs was truly the number one quarterback here in Edmonton for a long time. The highlights of his career, 1987 and 1993, when he was the outstanding player in the Grey Cup, two of the 11 Grey Cup championships won by the Edmonton Eskimos. Standings look like this in the CFL as we are getting towards the playoffs in the end of the regular season in the North. Calgary, Edmonton, and BC are in. What Edmonton is trying to do is lock up the number Number two seed and a home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs with a fine record of 10 and 5 back-to-back -back wins against the BC Lions on the other side of the ledger in the south Baltimore has clinched with a fine record of 13 and 3 San Antonio Birmingham and Memphis are fighting for the spot two and three remember the north brings in that fourth team in the south so only three teams go from the southern division into the CFL playoffs look forward to a wonderful partner tonight nine years with the Minnesota Vikings Darren Nelson and Darren, I'll tell you what, you look at these two football teams and you've got a situation where you've got electric offenses but dominating defenses. Oh, yeah, you've got some dominating defenses. But, but you know what? You also have one team that's struggling to get in the playoffs still, Michael. That team's probably going to try to put his best foot forward tonight. Well, how do you do that? You go to Darren Skies and find out <laughs> what he expects Memphis to try to do in tonight's football game. Well, I think the first thing you have to do is minimize Kerwin Bell and Shalom Baker. You've already heard about Bell, but Baker is a rookie. He has over 1,000 yards in receiving and five touchdowns. They're also going to have to contain Gizmo Williams, 5'6", 195 pounds. He's a bowling ball, but he's awful good, and he's due for a touchdown because he hasn't scored one this year yet. They're also going to have to keep Benny Goods out of the backfield. He's got 14 sacks so far, and he's looking for more. And for the Edmonton Eskimos, the first thing that comes to your mind, keep Damon Allen under wraps. He's a great runner. That's right. He is a real good runner. He has over 6,000 rushing yards. As a matter of fact, he's the all-time CFL leader in quarterback as far as rushing is concerned. Keep Marstrom out of field goal range. He got hot last week, kicked six field goals last week, and slowed down Cofield. He has 17 sacks. Sacks leads the league right now. Number 55, Tim Cofield, the defensive end out of Elizabeth City, has been outstanding. For Pepper Rogers football team, his first CFL season, he has said some things that the Memphis media found humorous. The people in Canada have not had the same reaction, always flamboyant. And of course, so is this man, longtime head coach Ron Lancaster, the Hall of Famer, the quarterback of Ottawa in 1960 when they won the Grey Cup. Named the Eskimos leader in 1991. Of course, his team, with him as the head coach, won the Grey Cup championship in 1993. Last year, it was the BC Lions victorious. Good conditions for football on a Friday night in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The temperatures are starting to come down a bit. And in Canada, it's in centigrade, about 8 degrees centigrade, just under 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Edmonton, when they set up offensively, will be with Kerwin Bell at the quarterback, of course, and Shalon Baker, the wonderful rookie, who has a chance tonight to set the CFL rookie record if he makes seven receptions on the evening. And watch for the veterans Nick Mazzoli and Jim Sandusky. And Gizmo Williams, number two, back deep to receive the football. 
off the kickoff from the Memphis Mad Dogs defense and when they come on the football field they will set up with Tim Cofield 55 on the right side of the line and the veteran Greg Battle at the quarterback or pardon me the linebacker position five DBs line up for Pepper Rogers football team so watch for them to be very strong on the defensive side of the football they are the number one team in the CFL in total offense allowed yards per game there I mentioned the weather a moment ago and it is becoming cooler and we are underway in Edmonton Gizmo takes the football at the 20-yard line. Breaks free for a return of 30 yards out to the 50. And, Mike, you know what most people don't know about Gizmo Williams? That he weighs 196 pounds. He's a bowling ball. He's real hard to tackle. Has that low center of gravity. Gets upfield nice on that kickoff return. Kerwin Bell, the last two games he has played has been just outstanding. I mentioned in the open the 395 yards in victory number two against the BC Lions. But a bit deserting. 16 touchdowns, 12 interceptions on the year for Kerwin, his first year as the starter here in Edmonton. Good field position for the Eskimos. Bell in trouble, and who is it? Number 55, Tim Cofield in the backfield to get sack number 18 on the year. That's right, Tim Schofield has at least 18 sacks now. He had 17 coming into this ball game. He just simply runs over an offensive lineman that time. It looked like Bell had plenty of time to throw the ball, but the defensive backfield for the Mad Dogs with real good coverage. Be a loss of about three yards on the play. Bring up a second and 13. Football on the 51-yard line. Bell has Sandusky knocked out. A nice defensive play made by number 13, Ed Berry. Flag on the play, and uh, the initial indication it's going to go against the Eskimos, and it'll be a punching situation. Edmonton 50, penalties decline, third down. You know, Mike, I used to play football. Actually, I didn't play football, but I used to hang around with Ed Berry a lot. Ed Berry grew up in the Bay Area, and I played for Stanford University. He's one of those young kids hanging around the football field all the time. I guess some of them might have rubbed off on him. Played collegiately at Utah State in his seventh CFL season, Ed Berry. Good defensive play a moment ago. Glenn Harper. 40.9 per kick this year. Taken at the 20-yard line. Good return back to the 35. 15-yard return for Anthony Jordan. And there is Damon Allen, number nine, the starting quarterback. On the year, just nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Impressive throwing numbers, but remember, partner, he can run the football. Yes, he can run the football. He has 11 interceptions right now, which tells you that they don't really throw the ball a whole lot. They kind of rely on him to make things happen back there. You know, when you get those scrambling quarterbacks, anything can happen. They'll start first and 10 on the 36. Quick step drop. Allen throws into the flat. Complete to Joe Horn, the other fine rookie receiver. Penalty flags all over the field. Look to me, Mike, like we might have an offside penalty. Face mask. A face mask. Wow, that's interesting. A face mask foul that was kind of blown before the play started. It looked like almost. I've never seen that happen before. Dave Yule, our referee for this evening's contest. And he's talking to all his partners in the stripes. As a player, you hate when they get in that conference because normally they try to change things up sometimes. Outside, Edmonton, penalties decline. Face mask, Edmonton number 20, 15 yards, first down. Here you're going to see number 20 for Edmonton, Gary Williams with the face mask right there. Drives him out of bounds with the face mask. Of course, the Mad Dogs are going to take the face mask as opposed to the five-yard offside penalty. So into Edmonton territory. Allen on the delay gives the football to Al Shipman, number 20. He bowls his way ahead with second effort for a decent gain on first down. There are some young players on this football team. Al Shipman, the rookie tailback out of Miami, a former Hurricane. And Joe Horn, watch for number 17. He's a rookie receiver, number four overall in the CFL. Just a J.C. player who was discovered at a Mad Dogs training camp. He's coming to the near side of your screen and set up on the left side of the football field. Let's see if Allen looks for him. Instead, he dumps it short. 
to his receiver number 89 Sean Collins complete for the first down Sean Collins runs a nice route that time actually you're gonna see it from the end zone point of view you're gonna see Sean Collins come out you're gonna see um, Damon Allen drop back to pass he's got a nice pocket there to throw in and then you're gonna see Sean Collins come back and make a nice catch on the little curl pattern gain of about 10 yards on the play football now moves to the 37 yard line Allen quick step again his receiver number 84 Walter Wilson stumbled for a moment but regained his composure made the catch near another first down and that's how you can tell a veteran wide receiver you see he's going to come out here and run a nice route he's going to slip down right as he plants he's going to try and slip down he tries to cut and jumps back up and catches the ball anyway nice concentration by Walter Wilson in his third season out of East Carolina and believe it or not, I played with Walter Wilson in San Diego. I also played for San Diego for two years. I know a lot of these guys out here. He was the 1990 third-round pick of the Chargers, one of the final cuts in 91. Gain of eight, second and two. Football inside the 30-yard line. Three back set for the Mad Dogs. Play action, Allen. Flag goes down. Allen looks end zone. In traffic, who comes away with the football? What a great catch. They are motioning that Floyd came down with the football. Lucius Floyd, the former Edmondson Eskimo, but we'll await to see what this flag is about. Memphis number 51. It's coming, Matt. Ten-yard penalty, second down repeat. We're going to try and find that holding call. Here you can see number 51 right there. William Lewis, he's going to grab a hold. And actually, he well, there's a the hole right there. Grasman wrestles number 40. Benny Goods down to the ground. And Benny Goods is a nice guy to wrestle down the ground. He's got 14 sacks already. So they march it back, and it sets up a second and 11 ball on the 38. Allen throws that one away. Joe Horn was covered nicely on the play by Gary Wilkerson. Pressure on the play by Larry Ruck. So it looked as if Damon Allen was going to take this opening series and put the football in the end zone of the Eskimos, but instead the holding brings it back. They can't convert, and Nick Maestrom, the rookie who kicked six field goals last Sunday, the third most in CFL history, including... A career-long 51-yarder will try from 41 yards. Pardon me, 46. Maestrom. Again is good. 46-yard field goal for Nick Maestrom. Opening series. And Memphis is on the board. All set? You bet I am. Thanks to you. A few weeks ago with Jesse, I noticed something. Dandruff. So I told him about Head & Shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. Because great hair can't have flakes. From the creator of T2 and Aliens. This is life. It's a piece of somebody's life. It's straight from the cerebral cortex. It's the end of the century and the new addiction. You ready? Try me. Is living other people's lives. Hold on. Or deaths. Strange Days is a sexy kinetic thriller. One of the best films of the year. Strange Days. Directed by Catherine Bigelow. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Do you love beer? Have you ever spent 20 minutes in the beer aisle? Have you ever toasted with beer? Do you ever return a case of beer because it tasted old? Did you ever notice how the good beer is the first to disappear from the fridge at parties? Do you think this might possibly be the best time in history for a beer lover to be alive? Do you love beer? Oh, isn't that cute? What? You guys are like the three bears. You're a double whopper, whopper, whopper junior, bing, bang, boom. I'm hungry, so what? Well, nothing just sort of struck me as funny. So what are you saying? I'm like the mama bear? <laughs> A Whopper value meal for any size appetite. Starting at $1.99 every day at Burger King. That's getting your burgers worth. Hey, uh, baby bear, you gonna finish those fries? Yes. Ooh, somebody needs a nap. <clears throat> <laughs> 
This year, over 400,000 aluminum radiators will corrode and fail. But Prestone Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone Zone of protection against corrosion. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. The Canadian Football League on ESPN2 is brought to you by Beechwood Aged Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. By Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Get it while it's hot. And by Pep Boys. For quality parts, accessories, and service, come to Pep Boys, America's automotive super center. Memphis gets on the board, 10-27 remaining in the first quarter. The Edmonton Eskimos, a record of 10-5 on the year. And the real key has been their back-to-back -back victories over the BC Lions. That has solidified them for now in the number two spot in the Northern Division. They are coming off their bye week in the CFL schedule. So a well-rested, very happy Edmonton team who have not had a regular season losing record since 1971. 12 straight seasons with a winning record, or pardon me, more than that, 22 straight seasons. On the return, up past the 30-yard line. Still on his feet, Eric Blunt. Great return by Blunt into Memphis territory. Mike, this is a great return by Eric Blunt, but more importantly, he picks up a lot of nice blocks on this return. You're going to see him running down the field here. He's going to break to his right and start running down the side. A nice move against number 33, Lucas Floyd. He's going to just simply head up the side. You see all those people blocking in front of him. And number two, Henry Williams throws a good block before he's finally run out of bounds. Blunt, the youngster out of North Carolina, a 45-yard return. Football spotted inside Memphis territory. On the ground, first of all, they run the football with Eric Blunt, the fullback, number 35. Eric Blunt finding a little tough sled in the middle of that defensive line for the Mad Dogs right now. Blunt, number five in the CFL, averaging almost seven yards per carry. That's incredible, and it's 6.8 yards per carry, I think, is what he's averaging right now. Give him the ball, let him run it. I know that might be why he's averaging 6.8 yards per kick, because he doesn't run the ball that much. Gain of three, second and seven. Movement on the line, no flags. Bell, now there's the flag, and who else? Timmy Colfield hauls him down for potentially his second sack of the contest. That might be a sack. He's awfully close to the line of scrimmage, though. And he's... And you're going to see number 55, Tim Cope. You're going to see the quarterback back to pass. And all of a sudden, he gets a little pressure, and there's Cofield again with sack number 19, if it was a sack, and he was not close to the line of scrimmage. He had five sacks against the Argonauts, September 6th. Edmonton number 50. Penalties declined. Third down. And why do I think Blake Dermott is, is uh, blocking Cofield? <laughs> It's having a little difficulty keeping that young man out of the backfield right now. And did you hear him screaming afterwards? I mean, he truly is a mad dog. <laughs> Isn't that a beer? Yeah, as a matter of fact, or is that red dog? Mad dog, red dog. Here they, now, you're oh. thinking of your high school days, part. Okay. 54-yard <laughs> field goal attempt, Sean Fleming. His long is 53 this year. Taken at the one-yard line and returned out of the back of the end zone by Joe Horn. Horn up to the 26. So Fleming misses from 54. As long as I mentioned 53, this one was short. If you could get 10 cents a minute on long-distance calls and anything else in the world you wanted, what would that be? I'd like 10 cents a minute and a new car. I'd take 10 cents a minute and a new boyfriend. 10 cents a minute and some cash back? You've got it. There's something new in Sprint Sense, cash back. Call now and get 10 cents a minute rates on state-to-state -state calls all evening, all night, and all weekend long. And you'll be rewarded with 10% cash back for every dollar you spend. Cash back, cool. That's something new. I like it. The way I call, that could really add up. There's no limit to the amount of cash back you can earn. Month after month, you'll see your cash add up, so it pays to stay with Sprint Sense. And when you sign up right now, Sprint will even switch you for free. 10 cents a minute and cash back? Getting cash back's great. Can I get the boyfriend too? Sorry, Sprint can't do everything. Well, not yet. Get 10 cents a minute now and 10% cash back every year with Sprint Sense. Call now, 1-800-913-9741. How about a Saturday night in Maple Leaf Garden? 
two of the original six, the New York Rangers, the Toronto Maple Leafs. We dropped the puck on the deuce, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. You get to watch Mark Messier, Brian Leach, Dougie Gilmore, and Matt Sundin, among others. 7.30 ESPN Saturday Night Hockey, the Rangers and the Maple Leafs. Tonight, though, it is the Canadian Football League. The Edmonton Eskimos and the Memphis Mad Dogs. Mike Goldberg and the nine-year Minnesota Viking running back Darren Nelson. We will talk to the flamboyant Pepper Rogers as he works his way into the locker room and then part of our halftime show. Football at the 25-yard line. Allen and his team, second series. Pressure on Damon. He avoids it, dumps the football over the middle. And the tackle was made by Leroy Blue, number 89. Damon Allen's going to show some of that quick, quick foot movement that's kept him in the league for 11 years right here. You see he's going to get some pressure by number 99. 89, Leroy Pugh. And he's going to step forward there and make a nice pass before he's finally knocked down. Uh, Gary Anderson, the seven-yard gain. Allen. Too far this time. Pass was intended for Anderson. Hard to call Gary Anderson a rookie, but he is a CFL rookie. Spent so many years, some of them very productive in the NFL. Well, you know, actually, Allen really had a difficult time throwing that pass because he threw it off his back foot going backwards. And I know he's a good quarterback. He can run around and throw the football a lot, but it's awful hard to be accurate when you're throwing the ball off your back foot running backwards. First punt of the night for Peter Gardere, the former Texas quarterback. He was in Sacramento along with Kerwin Bell last year. They were the two backups to David Archer with the gold miners. Averaging about 44 yards per kick. Gizmo set up at the 32. A good pressure and a good kick. Gizmo at the 31. Slips down at the 36. Gets up, but he's hammered by four white jerseys. A return of just five yards on the return and a 48-yard punt for Peter Gardere. Well, I can't understand exactly why people are slipping down. That's the second guy I've seen slip down. And because I was down on the field walking around today, Mike, and it feels in excellent condition, especially for this time in the year. Jimmy Cofield, the big sack master. Some of his teammates, the uh, head coach, has been uh, working the media a bit, you could say. Eddie Brown, Pepper Rogers, Eddie Brown. Playing against his old mates. Bell won at 88. Instead, he goes towards Shalon Baker. Too far overthrows his receiver. On the coverage was Ed Berry. Shalon Baker actually ran a real good pass route that time. He kind of went about 20 yards down the field and stopped. Looked like he was going to go back toward the quarterback and took off again. Ball just overthrown by Kerwin Bell. This kid has been absolutely fantastic this year. Holds the Eskimos club record for receptions in a season already by a rookie. Seven catches shy of the rookie record for receptions in the Canadian Football League. On second and ten, they go via the ground with Michael Souls, the Canadian. Souls out of McGill University, short of the first down yardage, punting situation for the Eskimos. And that's a nice low tackle by Daryl Ford. Sometimes you get some of those big fullbacks coming out of the backfield. You want you guys to come up and make a nice low tackle. That's time number 26, Daryl Ford. Nice low tackle holds him short of the first down. Glenn Harper's first punt was for 39 yards. He has now punted for over 50,000 yards in his career. Add on some more. Taken at the 25. Football's free. Edmonton might have it. Football came out of the arms of Don Smith, and the Eskimos have it. First turnover of the contest. Don Smith kind of dancing around a little bit there that time. Gets close to the sideline, kind of carried us with the football. And looked like number 35, Eric Blunt, the running back, knocked it out. That'll give Edmonton, yep, great field position, Darren, as we go to break. Don't worry, love. You're riding in the world's first sport utility wagon. 
I am. That's right. This is the all-wheel drive Subaru Outback. That's great. You no, know, it's got more cargo space than a passport. Uh-huh. The ground clearance of an Explorer. Yeah, but... Oh, did I mention? It gets much better gas mileage than a Jeep Cherokee. Outback, you say? Subaru Outback. The world's first sport utility wagon. Welcome, Dave. It's been a long time. It sure has, Red. You got a spicy chicken sandwich. But here, try this. Not bad. Water? No, thanks. Ooh. Now try a Wendy's spicy chicken. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's one very delicious, very spicy sandwich. Please. Ooh. Try Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich and long live the king. The Iowa Hawkeyes, number 23 in the nation, 4-0. The Indiana Hoosiers travel to Iowa's homecoming. Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City to challenge that unbeaten record. Big Ten football, 1 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. Part of the college football Saturday on ESPN2. Dwayne Stats, Mike Mayock, and Kirk Herbstreit will give you all the action. Mike Goldberg, Darren Nelson here at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. First turnover of the game. The fumble on the return by Don Smith, number 19 of the Mad Dogs, and it gives Kerwin Bell and company excellent field position at the 32 of Memphis. Bell. Complete touchdown. Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown made the most nonchalant catch I have ever seen a wide receiver make. It's as, it's as if he's been playing football his entire life. It's a nice throw by Kerwin Bell. You're see, going to see Eddie Brown run a nice little corner pattern. Bell's got plenty of time to throw, puts it up. And watch this nice low grab. Ah, it's no big deal. And walk into the end zone. Eddie Brown spent the early part of this season as a member of the Memphis Mad Dogs, traded a couple of weeks ago for Lucius Floyd, comes back to Edmonton where he was a star, and gets the first major of our contest. Fleming to make it 7-3 with the convert. He is 50 of 50. On the air, good look at Eddie Brown, number 88 out of Iowa State, his sixth CFL season. We're going to look at this touchdown again because Eddie Brown just made such a nonchalant catch on that touchdown pass. You're, sure you're going to see him come. You see a nice low throw. You're just going to bend over and just kind of keep walking right into the end zone there. Actually beats number 13. Who's that, Ricky Foggy? Actually, no, that's not Ricky Foggy. That's number 13, Keith Bell. A nice pressure there. Actually, there's Cofield again in the backfield, knocking Bell down on the ground. Eddie Brown was an integral part of that 93 Great Cup winner here with Damon Allen as the quarterback. He tied for number one with 15 touchdowns in 93 as an Eskimo. Happy to be back, that's for sure. Was not fond of uh, what happened in the coaching situation in Memphis when Adam Rita was replaced as the offensive coordinator quite quickly and he says if it wasn't for Damon Allen and Ricky Foggy on that team they wouldn't have a clue unfavorable comments made against his former team the Memphis Mad Dogs as Kerwin Bell hooks up for his first touchdown pass of the night Bell and Vargas 22 touchdowns combined in the last seven plus games now 13 for Kerwin Bell football taken at the 15. Returned out to the 27, a return of about 13 yards. Now stop me if I'm wrong, Michael. It looks like he ran into the back of his own man. Looks like he ran into Alfred Shipman, the running back who was trying to block for him, knocked him down. Yeah, I agree. Lucius Floyd on the return there. Eddie Brown definitely happy to be back here. He was very well liked as a member of the Eskimos. We'll call this his third plus season, wearing the green and yellow. Allen's first drive was very impressive. It was a two and out on the last series. They give it to the second man coming through the backfield, Al Shipman, and he'll gain about four or five yards on the play. Nice misdirection play that time. Shipman hitting the hole really hard, picking up five yards on the play. Actually, six yards on the play to set up a second and short. Gary Wilkerson made the defensive play for the Eskimos. Come 
second and short over the middle almost intercepted through the hands of Singor Mobley. Motley definitely had a chance to pick that one off, and I tell you what, he might have made it all the way to the end zone. That time, Damon Allen trying to get the ball to Alfred Shipman, and Shipman never even looks back to see the ball. You're going to see Damon Allen drop back in the pass, he's gonna, and then he's going to throw the ball, and you see number 20, Alfred Shipman, simply run past the ball. Excellent chance for an interception, and maybe even some points out of that one. Nonetheless, turns into a punting situation. Gardera on to kick again. His first punt was good for 48 yards. Gizmo back to return. Always dangerous as a return man. The all-time CFL leader. From the 33. A return of nine. He has hit at the 42-yard line. Gary Anderson on the special teams tackle. A Gizmo Williams is listed as a wide receiver, but he really doesn't play a whole lot of wide receiver. He's more of a special teams guy. He's going to return the punts. He's going to return the kickoff. He's not going to play a whole lot of wide receiver unless someone gets hurt. First and ten from the 41 of Edmonton. Little trickery to Eric Blunt. He comes around the right side, gets a couple of good blocks, but gains only about four yards on the play. Well, actually, he had a chance to make some more yards, but Leo Goenzen simply gets in the way, and he's kind of stopping him from running the football. If he'd have just started running up the football field, he could have gotten many more yards out of that play. Totally disregard me and get all the way to Willie on Jet. In the center. In the center is coming to me. Uh-huh. Run straight A off there. That's right, Benny Goods talking to the defensive coaches, obviously. Dumped off to the other side to Blunt. Dandy moves, scampers, still on his feet, trying to lean towards the first down. He's going to be about two yards short. Tackled on the play by Greg Battle, the linebacker. Eric Blunt does make a couple of real nice moves on this play, but he's going to be just short because Bobby Dawson is going to come up and hit him. You see Karim Bell going back to pass. Nice little swing pair. Actually, it's kind of like a quick screen. See his lineman out in front of him. He makes a nice cutback move there, but it's finally dragged down. That looks like a host of tacklers from the Mad Dogs. Yeah, Dawson just slowed him down ever so slightly, and it brings up a punting situation for Edmonton. Glenn Harper's third kick of the contest. The fake, and it does not work. They gave the football to number 32, Michael Souls, but the Mad Dogs weren't fighting that time. Why did it look like number 32, Michael Souls, was the one being faked out on that play? It did not look like he was expecting to receive the football. I know the coaching staff's going to have a little talk with him. Here you see the ball's supposed to be snapped to the punter right there. He's going to run off to the side of the field. You're going to see Michael Souls. ball's going to hit him right in the chest. And it hit him in the worst spot, right in the chest. All of a sudden, he gets tackled, short of the first down. And that sets up good field position for the Mad Dogs and Damon Allen inside the 50-yard line of Edmonton. Play action. Allen to the far side. Completion made. Good catch on the play. Gain of 13 yards. The reception made by number 84, Walter Wilson. Here's a look at battle on this last play. Look at his eyes there. He's intent looking around there, looking for somebody to hit. And looks like he may find somebody. He's going to run up the field. There he goes. Nice blocking there. Oh, nice tackle. Now, that guy's intense right there. He's going to try to knock the ball out, too. See, that's what you're taught to do as a defensive guy. You're going to knock that ball out. First and 10 after the first down on the reception by Wilson. They give the football. To Lucius Floyd, number 33, and he is hit by number 40, Benny Goods. And the late flag is some extracurriculars taking place on the football field. You're going to see this mixed direction. You're going to see a sweep play. Actually, the guys are coming underneath. You're going to see number 38 and number 27 actually get penetration into the backfield. That's really what stops the play. You're going to see number 27 flash right there and cut on the inside. That's Singor Mobley flashes right there, makes the play cut up field. Nice play by Mobley. Objectional conduct. Memphis 33. After the play, 10 yards, second down. That's Lucius Floyd, objectionable conduct. 
And a player down in the field. Can't see who it is. Blocked by the training stamp of Memphis right now. Could that be the reason for the personal foul, maybe? And sticking up for your teammate. Not a bad reason to do it, though, <laughs> is it, Darren? I don't know. You got to stick up for your teammates, so you can't let those guys have to get away with stuff, especially those offensive linemen. They got to move around the huddle, not guys off that huddle. Christopher Perez getting up on his own power, which is good to see. Perez spent 93 in the NFL with New England and Phoenix, an all Big Eight performer, three times with the Kansas Jayhawks. So after the objectionable conduct, I like that. It's a second and 22 from the 48. Allen from the gun. Goes downfield. Flag on the play. Joe Horn, they're waving it off. Joe Horn may have pushed off. He made the reception, got into the end zone. But I think we're going to see offensive pass interference. It's probably going to be offensive interference here. Joe Horn is running down the football field. And the ball is just slightly under throw. So he has to push the defensive back off. Number 20, Gary Wilkinson, off the play that time. Forward pass interference. Memphis 17, penalties declined, third down. John Kalen and Gary Wilkerson both had good coverage on Horn. You're going to see Horn going down the field here. He's actually in full stride right now, and he has number 20. Gary Wilkerson beat, actually, the, play, the ball had been thrown just a little bit longer. She had a nice little subtle bump there. I don't know about that one, no. I don't know if I would have called that one at all. The stutter step uh, gets the bump, and the flag goes the way of Edmonton. Gardere punts towards the end zone. Gizmo takes it three yards deep and concedes the single. 52-yard kick, and it'll go on the scoreboard as a single point for Memphis, make our score 7-4, Darren. You know, it looked to me like Gizmo Williams had plenty of room to get the ball out that time. He might at least got the ball out to the 10, 15-yard line, but he concedes the point. And that is a decision that's made in the CFL because what happens is they bring the football all the way out to the 35. So a lot of times you'll see teams in the CFL concede that single right. point, partner, and say, hey, we'll take the field position at the 35 because somehow with the average scores in this game, one point doesn't seem no, to make a big difference. <laughs> probably especially doesn't. in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 7-4 from the 35. Bell. In and out of the hands of the defensive player of the Memphis Mad Dogs, number 19, Don Smith. And you might see one of the reasons why some of these defensive backs are playing here in Canada as opposed to playing in the NFL, because Donald Smith, that ball hit him right in the hands. He had an excellent opportunity to pick that ball off. Ball hits him right in the hands. Smith out of Liberty in his fifth season. Last year with the Winnipeg Bombers, he had six picks. Got a good look at number 80, Nick Mazzoli. One of the veterans in this league. Baker to the near side. Sandusky Mazzoli to the far side of the football field. Pressure on Bell. He avoids one, but not the second. Tim Cofield, another sack. His third sack of the night, but the initial surge on the play was excellent. From number 58, Alex Gordon. Guess who, folks? You're going to see Tim Cofield lined up right out there on the left side of the screen. He's going to start coming in. You're going to see number 60. Chris Morris tried to block him. Actually does a pretty good job early, but simply loses his feet. And once that happens, Cofield's going to beat you. He's a quick man for his third sack of the evening. Cofield, the CFL leader, now with 20 sacks on the air. Good help on the play by Alex Gordon. You see him right there. And also 92, Stephen Bates. And he may, he may be zeroing in on that record again, Mike. What is it, five in the game? Yeah, he had five against Toronto earlier this year. Last year, he was all CFL, finished number two in the league with 16 sacks, as you see an injured player again down on the football field. You got to see Stephen Bates blitz in the backfield here, number 92. He's going to have to come off late as a block. They try to get him. He's the one that actually causes this sack because he makes Kerwin Bell run out of the pocket. He misses him, but then there's plenty of guys, including Cofield and number 77, Derek Harding, to clean up. Bates is the man down. He's trying to shake off. Might, might have aggravated a hamstring. 
And this is what happens sometimes when you don't protect for the quarterback. Baker with a nice move right there, wide open for a first down. But Bell has no time to throw him the football. He's still running. You've got two pretty good defenses here. Edmonton number one in the league with 27 interceptions on the year. Their defensive backfield dynamic. Number two allowing just 52% completions by their opponents. Fewest points allowed, fewest touchdowns allowed. On the other side, the opponents of Gizmo Williams, the Memphis Mad Dogs tonight. Number one in the league, Memphis's defense allowing just 19.7 points per game. Number three with 49 sacks, now 52 sacks. So safe to say we could see a defensive battle tonight, partner. So now that point is important. Yeah, yep, there you go. <laughs> you wanted to get I'm sorry, Mike. I, 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 I was waiting for that one. <laughs> I took my opportunity. I think you should. Harper with the punt. Short punt fielded at the 51-yard line. On the return was Anthony Jordan into Edmonton territory. 35-yard catch. Anthony Jordan with a 12-yard return. Anthony Jordan with a nice return that time. He's going to just go straight up field, which is what you're supposed to do as a punt return. You, the quickest way to score a touchdown is straight up field, and that's the way Anthony Jordan was headed that time. Under a minute remaining in the first quarter. 7-4 our score, Edmonton. Memphis with the football. They run it. First down gain of six yards. The ball carrier was Bruce Perkins, number 32, I believe. Pardon Bruce me, number Floyd, 33, the Lucius carrier. Floyd. Willie Pless, the Terminator, wrapping him up. The Terminator Willie Pless with the tackle. I like that name, Terminator. That means you either hit very hard or you've got everybody scared. And here's the Edmonton, and there's a the Memphis offensive coordinator, Buddy Geis, standing up there right now, trying to get some points on the board. He is the one who replaced Adam Rita, who no longer runs the offense. The former head coach in the CFL. And this time, the offense doesn't work very well for Lucius Floyd. He stops short of the first down, and it'll bring up a potential field goal attempt for the youngster, Nick Maestrom. And Nick Maestrom is awfully hot. He kicked six field goals last week. Made his first one today. He's going to get another opportunity to kick a nice long field goal here for the Mad Dogs. Leroy Blue, you see number 47, Larry Ruck. Another impressive defensive unit for the Eskimos, and they have a great history of having fine defensive players. Dominant. Winning Grey Cups in 78, 79, 80, 81, and 82. 11 total Grey Cups. Maestrom's attempt will come from about 50 yards. His long this year, 51, he made last week. Definitely far enough, and it is good. Nick Maestrom again. His second field goal of the night. He made a 46-yarder earlier, and he has tied the game at seven with a 50-yard field goal. The rookie has nodded us at seven. Shaving can strip away your skin's moisture, leaving it dry, burning. But now you can take the heat out of shaving with new Old Spice Soothing Gel, an amazing two-in-one gel that combines aftershave and moisturizer into one soothing formula. Try it. If you don't think this makes your face feel great, call 1-800-PROVE-IT for a full refund. Prove it to yourself. Try new Soothing Gel. It takes the heat out of shaving. <laughs> and now you've got proof. Guaranteed. Who are the Mole Rats? Shannon Doherty, Jason Lee, and for the first time in color, Jay and Silent Bob, Mine! and the legendary, the name amongst names, Stan the Man Lee. Fantastic for Reed Richards. Can his whole body stretch? I mean, every part, you know, like it. It's a superhero secret. Mole Rats, rated R. He seems to be really hung up on superhero sex organs. Start Friday at theaters everywhere. Start the second quarter here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Two field goals by the rookie, Nick Maestrom. 
Mike Goldberg, Darren Nelson, the former Minnesota Viking, and I, hey, partner, you're right. LaRouge makes a difference because it'd be 7-6. Now we got a tie football game. That's right. Don't question me again, okay? <laughs> Just let me call the game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's why he played nine years in the NFL. Confidence. Gizmo trying to avoid would-be tacklers. He does so just once and finally gets hauled down on the play. 14-yard return for Gizmo. You never talked like that to your coaches up in Minnesota, did you, Darren? Never said a word to him. That's why he stayed nine years. And that's why I waited all this time to just unload on you, I think. <laughs> Who'd you play for the majority of the time? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I played for Bud Grant for four years, I think. Les Deco one year, Jerry Burns for a few years. I had a bunch of coaches, unfortunately. From the 38, Bell, quick hit, incomplete. In and out of the hands of uh, Eddie Brown, number 88. Bobby Dawson, number 27 on the coverage. Looks like Eddie Brown was playing a little volleyball that time. It was like he's trying to serve it back over the net. Ball hit him high, but up in the hands. They kind of slapped it back down. Second and ten. Stephen Bates and the defensive line. Bell rolls. Cofield trying to chase him down. Bell's in trouble. Tim Cofield, his fourth sack of the game, and we are just a minute old in the second quarter. Not only that, but Cofield is a lot faster than Bell. Normally, you see those quarterbacks, especially in this league, with some quick feet that time. Tim Cofield is just going to track him down like a dog. You see Cofield, he's going to line up and come to the inside and then chase back to the outside. Bell sits up in the pocket, and he's simply going to have a coverage sack here, and then you're going to see Cofield simply just track him down. You see Bell trying to get by some time there, but only ends up losing more yards. Track him down like a mad dog. You <laughs> like a mad dog. From the 36, Anthony Jordan to the 41. A 50-yard punt, about a six-yard return. We're tied at seven. This is the CFL on ESPN2. Three out of four new car radiators are made of aluminum, lightweight aluminum, as thin as the top of this can. This year, over 400,000 aluminum radiators will pit, corrode, and fail. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone. Prestone antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone Zone of dual protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Don't put your car at risk. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been in kind of a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting a weave and you bob. Mm -hmm. They're thinking zig, you zag. Yeah. You're a bold man. The Whopper. It always tastes great because it's always fixed your way. With fries and a drink for just $2.99. Every day at Burger King. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rut mobile. No ruts, no glory. <laughs> from here, Canada. The home of ice. Molson ice. Ice brewed to be colder and bolder. Yet smooth as ice. Molson ice from the land where ice was born. Midnight Madness, presented by Pizza Hut tomorrow, midnight Eastern. Teams around the nation, strap them up and get on the hard court. ESPN and ESPN2 will be around the nation from Maryland. Susie Colbert and Dickie V, Dick Vitale on the deuce. Minnesota, Clark Kellogg and Michael Jeffrey Jordan. One student from each school will be given a chance to win a one-year scholarship by sinking a half-court shot. Midnight Madness tomorrow. Here's somebody taking a picture Hut. of us right there. And uh, properly or improperly dressed in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, probably came up to support her mad dogs. Oh, there you go. This is a... Uh, I don't know. She had to really search to get some of that stuff coming from Memphis. They don't have those kind of jackets in Memphis, <laughs> I don't think. She probably went shopping today. If she found that jacket here, you get a brownie point, partner. Complete pass towards the sideline. Got by Walter Wilson. 
We're going to ISO here on Walter Wilson. He's going to do an out pattern here about 10 yards deep. Actually, it's a little comeback pattern because the ball is going to take him to the outside. Nice eyes there. Walter Wilson watches the ball all the way inside, just steps out of bounds. So he may have been off to the races. Wilson out of East Carolina. You heard one of his teammates say, way to go, East Carolina. Nicknamed the franchise. He's a substitute school teacher in the offseason. Last year played with the Baltimore Football Club as it was the Great Cup losers to BC. First and ten. Allen complete in front of Gary Wilkerson. The reception made by Wilson again. There is a flag thrown in the backfield though. And it was thrown the way of Damon Allen. Might be a holding violation. Well anytime you get a anytime you get a flag thrown in the backfield you know it's probably going to be holding. Holding. Memphis 62, 10 yards, repeat first down. Christopher Perez, the left tackle. How you like that, Mike? Right on cue. I couldn't have set that up better myself. You, you did set it up yourself. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so they march it back 10 yards, brings up a first and 20. Rogers Pepper in the side judge there a bit, it seemed. Now Allen. With time, throws into double coverage, intercepted. No, they're going to wave it off. Wilkerson couldn't hold on to the football, but Allen threw it nowhere near a white jersey. You know, he's had a couple of balls get get away from him today. That time, he simply overthrows the wide receiver. You see Damon Allen setting up in the pocket. See if he slips when he throws his bar stuff. No, he has his feet underneath him. May have slipped just a tad bit, but that ball is way overthrown. Looks like he was trying to hit Walter Wilson again. Completing just about 59% of his passes on the year. And, you know, with all fairness to Damon Allen, he's never been known as a great passer. That is why he has been so successful in the CFL game, because he can throw the football a bit, but he's such a dangerous runner from the quarterback position. Second and 20. Pressure on. Larry Ruck can't get Allen. He eludes it, but not for long. Jed Roberts had pressure. And finally, it was Willie Pless, number 39, for an 11-yard loss. This is how you have to go after a guy like Damon Allen. He has such quick feet. He's really hard to tackle. You have to kind of trap him back there. And the way you do that is you send as many guys as possible at him and make him run out of the pocket. You see number 43, Jed Roberts, coming after him. And he's finally tackled by number 39, Willie Pless. Help on the play by Malvin Hunter. Peter Gardere will have to kick it away. His fourth punt of the night set up at the 21 yard line. Gizmo is at the 35 of Edmonton. They're going to throw the flag roughing the kicker. Roughing the kicker against Mark Tobert. Let's see what Gizmo does with the football. Gets to the outside. Watch out when he gets up ahead of steam. Multiple wow. flags. Count one, <laughs> two, three, four more flags thrown on the return by Gizmo Williams. But the first flag is going to be roughing the kicker against Mark Tobert, number 31. Every official threw his flag in unison. <laughs> Matter of fact, they all landed in a perfect square, it looks like, down there. Probably had a clipping call that was very obvious. Conference time. Oh, here go those conferences again. For Dave Yule and his crew. While they sort it out on the field, we'll take a break and return to Edmonton after this. This could be your own. This fall, great things are coming to HGTV. How would you like a $10,000 room makeover from HGTV's Room by Room experts? Hi, I'm Matt Fox. And I'm Sherry Hiller, and it can happen if you win HGTV's $10,000 marvelous room makeover. And don't miss our new fall shows, from the successful and acclaimed series The Victory Garden to the fun and offbeat pastimes of What's Your Hobby? Coming soon to HGTV. It's almost that time again. All right, let's try again. And guess who's back? Live. All right, say, here's the thing. <laughs> the biggest comedy event of the year. I want some more money. I'm going to grab this thing. Comic Relief 7, coming in November, only on HBO. Something's coming. 
Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The Memphis Mad Dogs and the Edmonton Eskimos, your CFL matchup this evening. Edmonton, the 93 Grey Cup champions, coming in tonight with a record of 10 and 5. Memphis, 8 and 7, fighting for a playoff spot with Birmingham and San Antonio. They've won two straight. Four of their last five. Memphis and Edmonton on the deuce due to time constraints. We'll be back after this with further action. I'm Maximilian, a connoisseur of death, you might say. He's got a taste for evil. Let me like that for you. A taste for women. Go in there, you act like a vampire. I would love to have you for dinner. And in a place like this. Interesting. Kind of itches a little. He'll never go hungry. I already had Italian. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, Angela Bassett, Vampire in Brooklyn. I love this place. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 27th everywhere. Beyond the window electric, down a computer-generated blacktop, they ride. Carrying the remains of the day, they've come to the global village with software technology so bold. It can restore life to the fabric of a weary society and bring a touch of comfort to a material world grown hard. They are the ones who surf the net, the whiz kids of the information superhighway. Three minute warning sounded here in Edmonton. Exactly three minutes remaining in the first half. Dominated by the defensive units. And Joe Horn and his rookie counterpart, impressive Shalon Baker, held in check. Memphis has got a couple of field goals from Nick Maestrom, a 46-yarder and a 50-yarder to go along with their single. And the only major of the contest came the way of Eddie Brown, a 32-yard touchdown reception from Kerwin Bell, and thus our score, 7-7. What a big single point that was. <laughs> Memphis from the six. <laughs> Has his man, can't complete the pass to Al Shipman coming out of the backfield. You're not letting that go, are you? Nah, I'm going to ride that one for most it's of the gonna night. It's going to be a one-point game. You I'll watch, tell you though. what, if it, if it, you better hope it's not. <laughs> as long as I don't have to fly back to the States with you and hear it for That's hours okay. upon hours. I'm not on the red eye like you tonight. <laughs> I'll be in town this evening. Uh-oh, watch out. Second and ten from the six. They got to get it out from deep in their own end. Lots of time on the clock. Allen slipped in the end zone. Now scampers out and he's taken down at the ten yard line. Caught from behind on the play by Errol Martin. And you know what, Mike? I finally figured out why all these guys are slipping. Normally this time of year, this is when the grass starts to die. You're going to see number 40. Benny Goods, defensive tackle, coming in the backfield there, forces Damon Allen to step up in the pocket. He finally has to take off and run the ball. <laughs> Good finish block there, too, by number 62, Chris Perry, the offensive tackle. You like those big offensive linemen to pound those guys in the dirt at the end. Kind of rub some mud on their uniform. Get them dirty. Edmonton's going to end up with great field position and plenty of time on the clock to work. Still over two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Gardere from his own end zone. Good kick. Drives Gizmo back to his own 50. Williams trying to get away to the left side of the field. Good special teams coverage. A loss of five on the return, but they're going to spot it favorably at the 50. A 50-yard punt. Gary Anderson was the guy who hustled down and made the tackle of Gizmo Williams. Yeah, Gary Anderson made a nice play, but Gizmo kind of helped him out a little bit. Instead of running north and south, he's running east and west trying to pick up some blocks that just simply weren't there. Pepper Rogers complaining about a holding call. That's a coach's job, too. Number one is to coach. Number two is to complain. And number three is to fuss at your player. <laughs> Cofield, five sacks already. They give the football on the reverse back the other way, and it, it's going absolutely nowhere but backwards. Michael Armstrong made the tackle of Eddie Brown. Michael Armstrong you know, this has to be the, your worst nightmare as a wide receiver. You're going to see the, the, the defensive lineman simply waiting back there for you. And the reason it's a big nightmare is because as a, as, a, as a wide receiver, you don't get to run the ball 
that often. When you finally get to run it, there's somebody waiting for you, number 99, Michael Armstrong, in the backfield. Loss of seven, second and 17. Cofield, watch out. Bell dumped the football. Cofield won't get his sixth sack of the night. But another quarterback pressure for the big man in a punting situation for Edmonton with the clock stopped and 141 remaining. On that play, they had Eric Blunt back there trying to block Cofield. And I know Cofield's eyes must have been about three sizes larger than they normally are. There is just no way this is going to happen. You're going to see Cofield coming in. There's Eric Blunt. He tries to block him. I don't know how hard that try was right there, though. <laughs> That's kind of the old Matador block there. Not a good sight. As the Mad Dog player heard a couple of plays before, works his way towards the end zone. The rookie Alex Gordon out of Cincinnati. Harper with the kick. High kick. Good hang time. Taken at the 17 by Anthony Jordan. Jordan returns to the 32. 50 yard punt. And Allen and company to work with 129 remaining. And Edmonton Eskimos failed to take advantage of that good field position they had. I think that drive actually started at about their own 50 yard line. They pick up no yards on that drive. Allen to start at the 32. Oh, he's got a receiver wide open over the middle of the football field and working his way into Edmonton territory. Sean Collins with the big reception and a gain of 43 yards before Gary Wilkerson caught up. Sean Collins is simply wide open on this, but you see uh, uh, Damon Allen actually set his feet, hits Sean Collins right in stride, makes a nice move on number 18, Glenn Harper, and then finally is brought down. Sean Collins, the rookie out of Northern Arizona. Allen again, time, looking towards the end zone, overthrows Collins this time. Collins had a break on the football and a step, but the pass was too far. That's one of those passes you throw down there, that part of the field, where either your man gets it or no one gets it. Allen slightly overthrew it, but that's probably where he should have thrown the football. Just a little bit less of an arc on the ball. Maybe that receiver would have come up with it. Number 89, Sean Collins. Clock stopped with 59 seconds left in the half. Second and 10 from the 35. Allen rolls left, has room to run, has the first down. Damon Allen improvises. A good rush was started by Larry Ruck. Cavus Reed finally stops Damon Allen. Another Memphis first down. Damon Allen is the type of quarterback that you actually want to keep in the pocket because he's probably going to beat you more with his feet than with his arm. That time, Ruck forces him out of the pocket. He's going to simply just take off running down the sideline. He's got good speed for a guy who's been in the league 11 years running with a brace on. He's not going to slide down either. He keeps going and picks up that first down. You mentioned earlier Damon, the all-time leading rushing quarterback in CFL history. Quick drop, sideline, complete to Wilson, out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Now you see the way Walter Wilson's... Now look at Walter's shirt. You gotta have that in, Walter. That's probably why he got tackled on this, but you're gonna see Walter Wilson running a nice little out route here, tries to make a move at the end to get in the end zone. Nice throw by Damon Allen, and Walter Wilson's gonna make a nice move there, but it just doesn't work too good against number 24, Kevin Reed. Cavus Reed, the defensive back. 27 seconds on the clock. Memphis banging at the door. Towards the end zone, incomplete. Darian Hagen had good coverage on the intended receiver. 
And the pressure in the backfield applied by Willie Pless as he got a hit on the quarterback of the Mad Dogs. We're going to see Damon Allen go back to pass. And Willie Pless is going to blitz untouched right up the middle. Damon Allen trying to unload the football in a nice spot for his receiver to get to it. But Willie Pless is the man responsible for breaking that play up with a nice pass rush. Nice hit right in the gut, too. So Maestrom will come on and try to break this 7-7 tie. With 22 seconds remaining in the half, he's made field goals already of 46 and 50 yards. This attempt will be from 21. The rookie is three for three. And it is 10-7, Mad Dogs. Maestrom pretty hot the last couple of weeks. He had six field goals last week. Already had three today. 18 seconds remaining in the half. Don't forget we're going to try to visit with Pepper Rogers before the half and Ron Lancaster as we begin the second half of play. Sports match with Reese Davis standing by in our studios. He'll have some baseball for you, I'm sure. You're going to see number 12, Kerwin Bell, back to pass. And there's the man. <laughs> Almost gets sack number six tonight, I believe. First Tim Cofield. Bell dumps it into the flat to Michael Souls, number 32. Souls was hit by Jamie Anderson, number 45. Thinking about using the timeout? Yeah, they'll use their one timeout with 11 seconds on the clock. One timeout a half each side in the Canadian Football League. We have timeout at this call. Now, you know, in, in this league, the wide receivers can get a head start on that Hail Mary pass down the field because they get to start running toward the line of scrimmage as opposed to the NFL where they got to just stand there. Our coverage continues of the Canadian Football League on ESPN2. Next week, we are in Regina, Saskatchewan, Friday night, 8 o'clock, kick it off. The Calgary Stampeders, number one team in the league, and their quarterback, Jeff Garcia, taking on the Rough Riders of Saskatchewan from Regina, where they will play the 1995 Grey Cup, and you'll see it live on ESPN2. Bell rolls. Bell in trouble. Bell sacked. Again. Michael Armstrong that time at least. They managed to keep Cofield out of the backfield once and Michael Armstrong takes over in sacks Bell. Michael Armstrong lined up over the tackle. You're gonna see running back come up and try to block him once again. That's a serious mismatch there. Those low blocks don't it looked like he tried to tackle him on that play. Michael Armstrong breaks three breaks free drops Kerwin Bell in the backfield loss of 17 Bell will take a knee and we'll go to the locker room the Edmonton Eskimos 10 and 5 on the year will go to the locker room trailing by three to the Memphis Mad Dogs thanks to the right foot of Nick Maestrom field goals of 46 50 and 21 yards 10 7 our score after two quarters of play here in Edmonton here we go, Whopper Junior Value Meal. Oh, Whopper you. for me and a double Whopper. Thanks, man. Double Whopper? I'm scared of you. It's good. It's as big as the American way. Big cars, big houses, big food. At Burger King, get the flame broil taste of a Whopper Value Meal for just your size appetite at just your size price, starting at $1.99. And get your burger's worth. And what about moderation? Moderation's cool, if there's a whole lot of it. <laughs> Burger King, get your burger's worth. <laughs> There's one antiperspirant to use when you're extra, extra close. Arid, extra, extra dry. The one antiperspirant you can trust to give you arid double X protection to help stop perspiration before it turns into embarrassing odor. And when you help stop perspiration and odor, who knows what you might start? So come on, go ahead. Use arid, extra, extra dry and get a little closer. The girl who wasn't like the other girls. The pretty girl who didn't flirt and giggle. The one who was good at sports, but never on the team. That girl still isn't like the other girls. She never wanted to be. 
We welcome you back to Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The Memphis Mad Dogs and the Edmonton Eskimos, your CFL matchup this evening. Edmonton, the 93 Great Cup champions, coming in tonight with a record of 10 and 5. Memphis, 8 and 7, fighting for a playoff spot with Birmingham and San Antonio. They've won two straight. Four of their last five. Memphis and Edmonton on the deuce due to time constraints. We'll be back after this with further action. Do you love beer? Do you have a favorite beer glass? If beer had no labels, what would you drink? When everybody at the table is trying to decide on red or white wine, do you order beer? Do you know the difference between lager and ale? Why not Novemberfest? Do you love beer? These guys are persistent. Well, they're no match for the world's first sport utility wagon. Oh, really? All-wheel drive Subaru Outback's got more headroom than a Cherokee. Uh-huh. The ground clearance of an Explorer. So you say. Ride smooth as any car. Got any more of those tidbits? What, like more stability in a turn than a Chevy Blazer? Sure, that'll do. That's my Subaru Outback. World's first sport utility wagon. 1970, Elton's very first song this went gold. Song. Then, Rocket Man I'm went gold. Man. Then, 103 of his other songs went gold. And now that he's touring with 38 musicians in a small army of stagehands. And uh, how will you be paying? Elton's gone gold. Money? These are gold. Oh, we'll need 371 wake-up calls. After all, nothing's got the power of gold. Oh, boy, am I... <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> and my body is... Oh, how am I ever gonna... <laughs> Race like will liquid cats. Why is it the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever medicine? Why, so you can rest medicine, of course. Most new car radiators are made of aluminum, as thin as the top of this can. But Prestone Antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone Zone of protection against corrosion. It's your car. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. Bell gives to Blunt. Blunt gets three. Quickly hit on the play by Greg Battle, along with Rodney Harding, 77. Talking about Cofield once again this evening. He's been a thorn in their side all night. This time he's going to get. Bell gives to Blunt. Blunt gets three. Quickly hit on the play by Greg Battle, along with Rodney Harding, 77. Talking about Cofield once again this evening. He's been a thorn in their side all night. This time he's going to get in the backfield again. Power rush wraps up the quarterback. They got to find some way to block this man. He had five sacks in the first half. Bell rolls, throws short. Jim Sandusky, the intended receiver. Pressure on Kerwin Bell from the backside again, Timmy Cofield. Cofield is having an absolutely amazing game right now, already tying the league record with five sacks in this game. Here you're going to see number five, Shalon Baker, go out for a pass play right here, wide open, but he didn't have time to throw the ball. He didn't have time to catch it because his quarterback's on his behind. That time, Greg Battle blitzed in and knocked him down. Tell you what, we haven't said the name Shalon Baker at all tonight. He had a spectacular day against BC a couple of weeks ago. Jordan at the 29. Gets a block, oh, returns oh, it about oh, six oh, yards. <laughs> Brian Walling. We will take a timeout from Edmonton. The Eskimos continue to trail. When life becomes a... They fled in terror, horrified by the very sight of it. The cable box. Run for your lives! But one man did not run. He understood its awesome power. The cable box. The only way to get an extra channel of HBO at no extra cost and pay-per-view. So don't delay. Call now. The cable box. Welcome it into your home. 
She was a working artist and, uh, and a highly acclaimed artist. She was the first one to really free me up. I think she did know how much impact she had on me. You're unique, you're special. You only need to hear that once. Everyone has a teacher they'll never forget. Meet 36 of them when the Walt Disney Company and McDonald's present the American Teacher Awards during a one-day free preview Wednesday, November 1st. I think that anyone that inspires you and, and helps you be the best you can be is your friend. Edmonton Eskimos, good crowd here for Friday night of CFL action. 10-7, 12-36 remains in the quarter. Eskimos averaging just over 20 points per game, but still at 10-5, and, and very important victories, back-to-back -back wins, a decisive victory at BC Place against the Lions, and then a week later, which was actually October 1st, a showdown on a Sunday afternoon here at Commonwealth Stadium, an overtime thriller, which saw the Lions fall to the Eskimos again, 39-36, so they've got a game in hand in the standings on BC and the tie break sweeping the Lions. First and 10 from the 39, Allen quick hit. Larry Ruck hits the receiver eight yards deep into his pattern. Al Shipman made the catch. He has a very nice catch by Shipman, actually, but Ruck's going to come up and hit him really nice after the reception. You know what, Mike? There are a lot of teams that do not want to see the Memphis Mad Dogs in the playoffs because their defense is so good. They're always in every ball game. They always have a chance to win. So I think if I'm some of the other teams out there watching this football game right now, I am cheering against the Memphis Mad Dogs right now. Call it a gain of seven. Sets up the second and three. Allen pumps, looks downfield. Nobody even close to the football. Joe Horn looking back at his quarterback going, I don't know what you were thinking, Damon, but I can tell you I wasn't thinking the same thing. And you know what? I'll bet number 17, Joseph Horn, is wrong, and I'll tell you why. Normally when the quarterback pumps like that, that means the receiver either has to break off a route and go deep or something to that sort. And, and Horn did not go deep on that pass play. And, and, we'll, and we'll watch and see if, if uh, him and um, Damon Allen are talking on the sideline. It looks like once a quarterback pumps the football normally, wide receiver is supposed to go deep. Guard dare to kick for the eighth time. You don't want to put the football in Gizmo's hands too many times. On one bounce at the 20. Stutter step trying to set up some blocks. Cuts back in. Gizmo pulls his way up. Loses the football. the football. Memphis. No. Edmonton has it. Memphis had the start. Gizmo lost it, but his teammate came away with it. Heads up play by Hensi Charles. That's an amazing play by Hensi Charles because it doesn't even look like there was an Edmund, it, there was an Edmonton player around the ball that time. And the only green jersey who could save the day on that play. So Bell to work from the 24. Dumps it off. A gain of three yards at best for Eddie Brown. And right now, Emerson needs to get something started on offense because Cofield and some of those other some of those other guys on the Memphis defense have really had them in check most of the ball game. Not only that, but Kerwin Bell has been on his behind an awful lot tonight. Gain of five, second and five. Blunt has blockers, has the first down, a gain of eight yards out to the 38-yard line and a first down Eskimos. And Cofield was coming in hard again. Yeah, Cofield was coming in hard again, but Eric Blunt does another real nice job of waiting for his blocker. You're going to see the quarterback, Bell, go back to pass and throw the ball out. You're going to see number 35, Greg Battle, follow this play the whole way and finally make the tackle. Blunt runs the football on first down. Gain of just a couple. They like this youngster, though. Had five touchdowns on September 15th against Winnipeg. Comes in number five in the CFL, as we said with plenty of yards per carry. There's number 35, Greg Battle, in the play once again. He's all over the field right now. He's one of the reasons why that Memphis defense is so good. He's also got six INTs this year. Three sacks, number two with 55 tackles, ninth year out of Arizona State. Dumped off the blunt. 
Blunt will have to make some fancy moves to get through this wall. He gets close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it because I'll tell you what, he cut back inside and made something out of nothing. Yeah, he made something out of nothing that time. He made a couple guys miss, but he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. You're going to see Blunt lining up in the backfield here. Can just run a swing route. He must have caught about four or five of those already tonight. He makes number 27. Bobby Dawson misses, as well as a couple other guys. Lunges four, but doesn't quite pick up the first down. That's about a yard short. Costly play for the Mad Dogs. Two players down on the field. Greg Battle. They can either afford to and lose, Tim Greg. Oh, then yeah. there's no way. That's, that's, that's a double right there because you don't want to lose those two. And I'll bet you what happens is that those two probably ran into each other. They're both chasing the ball so hard tonight. That's why battles, if that happened, all the way on his back, and Cofield's just on one knee. Well, Cofield has, has a slight size advantage in that battle right there. 245, 6'2. Tim Cofield, Greg Battle, 6'1, 225. And although I, I would, I would, I would be kind of sad to say this, but I know those guys on the Edmonton Eskimo sidelines are kind of saying to themselves, "We don't like to see anybody get hurt, but we wouldn't mind watching both these guys go off the field right now, even if it's for a couple plays." Yeah, no kidding. Let us take advantage of it. No, nope. well, Cofield's up. was kind of pointing to the back of his head and he's walking very slowly. And Battle is also uh, he's trying to shake something out of his head it looks like. Both of them will go off the field. Greg Battle out of Arizona State began 94 with Las Vegas traded to Ottawa this year with the expansion Memphis Mad Dogs. To see Greg Battle come in right here. Actually hurts his head that time because he because he landed right on the running back flush and actually his head kind of went back a little bit. That's probably what was wrong with him. That's why I was holding the back of his head. Nice form tackle, but he's got to move his head off to the side. Third and one. They go for it and get the first down. Bell didn't go for the keeper, but nonetheless it works as they had the three back set. And a big Willie man Pless runs the, the football. Carrier. Willie Pless, the defensive player, comes in, gets the first down. Not only that, but your two best defensive players for the Mad Dogs are out of the football game. It's a good time to gamble. First and ten now. Eskimos on their own 49. Blunt on the delay. Up near another first down. Gain of eight yards on the play. Well, we've seen the Statue of Liberty. This time we're going to see a sprint draw here this time. Nice run by Blunt on the sprint draw. It looks like it's offensive line starting to take advantage of that defensive line of the Mad Dogs because those two good, real good defensive players are out of the game right now. On second down, again they go via the turf and get another first down. The Eskimos moving the football this time on the feet of Michael Soles. Yeah. Battle just kind of bumped his head a little bit that time. Mike, yeah. he's back on the field, and Cofield is also back on the field. Ball at the Memphis 53 yard line. Now, Blunt has room. Football's free. Oh. Memphis has it. Football pop free, and the Mad Dogs, Darrell Ford, 26, comes away with it. And I believe Bobby Dawson, number 27, is one that actually caused that fumble with a nice hit. Looks like it was right on the football that time. The ball must have jumped up in the air about 10 feet before somebody came up with it. You see the old Statue of Liberty play again. And Eric Blunt's going to run with the football. And then actually, yep, there he comes. Number 27. Bobby Dawson knocks the ball out, and Daryl Ford catches it in the air. So the drive stalled, and now two turnovers both ways. Memphis, and moving from the side of the line was Leroy Blue, number 89. See if he was drawn off. You know, it always amazes me how those guys try to hide. Now, I don't know exactly how big Leroy is. Five yards. Go first down. But ducking down at the end, once you're already obviously offside, isn't going to do any good. 
We're going to see that hit one more time. Nice play right there by number 27, Bobby Dawson. The ball knocked up in the air. Recovered by number 26, Daryl Ford. Bobby Dawson's a little dangerous. So first and five. Good defensive surge by the line led by Willie Pless. Really Pless, the all-time leading tackler in CFL history with 794 entering this evening. He's also leading the league right now. He had 85 tackles coming into this ball game. He's certainly added to that tonight. He's averaged almost six tackles a game since 1987. Second and three after the gain of two. Allen under pressure. Goes upstairs into tight coverage. Incomplete. Defensive play made by Glenn Rogers Jr. Crowd starting to get in this ball game a little bit. Gary Morris, the intended receiver. Pressure again, partner. Damon Allen, once again, under pressure, scrambles out to his right, blunts out there waiting for him, throws the ball up for grabs. Actually, I don't know if his coach would agree with that call. And a nice play by number 26, Daryl Ford. Forcing the punting situation. Glenn Rogers Jr. had three picks against Hamilton earlier this year. That tied a team record. Gizmo at the 25. Gardere. Driving kick taken by Williams. Williams hunted down right away. Face mask, no question about it. No question about the fact that Anthony Jordan had a hold of Gizmo's face mask, and so they'll move the football up the field, and Bell and company will go to work. Two friends. The two of you have so much in common, I think you should date each other. Booth dump. There is something out there that can ease our double loss. Some guys might give up. I love the smell of commerce in the morning. For Brody and T.S. Brody men, Nucci Nucci's. It's mall or nothing. Ah! Shannon Doherty, Jason Lee, with Jay and Silent Bob. Ah! Mall rats, rated off. Dude, this looks like your mom. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Oh, isn't that cute? What? what? You guys are like the three bears. You're double whopper, whopper, whopper junior, bing, bang, boom. I'm hungry, so what? Well, nothing just sort of struck me as funny. So what are you saying? I'm like the mama bear? <laughs> A whopper value meal for any size appetite. Starting at $1.99 every day at Burger King. That's getting your burgers worth. Hey, uh, baby bear, you gonna finish those fries? Yes. Ooh, somebody needs a nap. <clears throat> <laughs> NHL Saturday night on the deuce. New York Rangers, Toronto Maple Leafs. Don't forget some new names in Toronto. Larry Murphy, Sergio Mameso, Dmitry Yushkevich from Philadelphia, Mike Hudson, and the great one's little brother, Brent Gretzky, signed as a free agent. The Rangers and the Maple Leafs tomorrow, 7.30, from Maple Leafs Garden in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> I think you need oh my one of those, goodness. Darren. They normally wear those kind of things in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Those glasses really set it off, don't they? They, they do look good, huh? <laughs> you no, know, he could go to Lambeau tomorrow and just put a patch on that. He'd be fine as a Packer fan. Nice wedge of cheese. He'd be perfectly fine. <laughs> Watch out. Pressure on Bell. Football's on the turf. Picked up by Blunt. Heads up move by Eric Blunt. He's still on his feet. Cofield brings him down. Michael Armstrong, 99, is the one who drilled Kerwin Bell. The football popped free. Blunt heads up, avoids the turnover for the Eskimos. And Mike, the big question mark in this ball game is going to be how long Kerwin Bell can stay in this ball game. Number 99, Michael Armstrong in the backfield again, knocks the ball out. And Blunt with a real nice play there actually picks the ball up and gets a few yards out of the play. Second and eight. Blunt on the delay. Has room. First down and more. Blunt hit by Bobby Dawson. A gain of 12 yards for the first down. 
Eric Blunt adding to that 6.8 yard per carry average he had coming into this game also had five touchdowns. He's a real good runner. He runs north and south but knows how to use his blocker. On first down from the gun. Bell rolls to the near side, dumps it off sideline, complete to Shalon Baker. Another Eskimo first down, a gain of 14 yards inside the 40-yard line of the Mad Dogs. I don't know how many times we've called Shalon Baker's name tonight, but this, that's one of the few catches he has today. Also, you're going to see Kerwin Bell out, and this might be the way to beat that pass rush, to actually roll out and get away from the pass rush, make Cofield guys like that chase him around a little bit. Blunt. A good run on first down. They're not afraid to run the football on first down under Ron Lancaster. Don Odegaard, Bobby Dawson in to make the stop. When you got a running back that's averaging almost seven yards a carry, you're almost guaranteed yeah. to pick up some good yards running the football. And Shalon Baker with that last reception now holds the Eskimos club record for receiving yards in a season by a rookie. Congratulations, Shalon. They go to him again. And now as the receptions continue to pile up, we should watch that all-time CFL rookie record for catches in a year because he came in seven catches shy of that mark. That time, Shalon Baker showing that he is actually a rookie still in this league. He comes up about two yards short of the first down. He ran his pattern just a little too short. The ball was completed, but he should have ran the ball about five yards past the actual first down and come back to it. That way he would have had room to make the first down. So Sean Fleming, who missed from 54, will come in and attempt his second field goal of the night. Out of the hold of Glenn Harper from the 37-yard line. Fleming from 30 to 39. Now 14 of 17 on the year. He has tied this game at 10. The 37 yard field goal by Sean Fleming of Edmonton. Have you heard what Jim's driving? What's he got now? You should see this thing. What an incredible machine. Sleek, aerodynamic. Fast? Oh, yeah. That baby really moves. So, what kind of engine does he have on that thing anyway? Nuclear reactor. Be amazed at what teenagers are driving these days. Right full rudder, steady course, 355 five, Helmont. For more information, call 1 800 USA Navy. Take the heat out of shaving with new Old Spice Soothing Gel. It'll cool the burn, soothe your skin, it'll make your face feel great. Or call 1 800 Prove It for a full refund. So try new Soothing Gel, because now you've got proof. Guaranteed. All set? You bet I am. Thanks to you. A few weeks ago with Jesse, I noticed something. Dandruff. So I told him about Head & Shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. Because great hair can't have flakes. Communication involves a sender, a receiver, a medium, and a message. Listen carefully. <laughs> Did you hear that? College football Saturday, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time. They kick it off from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Big Ten battle between the Indiana Hoosiers and Iowa Hawkeyes. You can see 80 NHL games, over 150 college basketball games this season. Great college football on ESPN, too. If you don't have the deuce, contact your local cable operator now. Mike, I just forgot. We don't have to do some my neighborhood. I could have told my wife only only loved her 95 percent of the time. There, there you go. And gotten away, but she'd get the tape though. <laughs> and you will contact your local cable operator when you get home, right, partner? Yes, I will. It is now 10-10 with three minutes and some change remaining in the third quarter. As it goes incomplete on first down for Damon Allen. Not your typical CFL game because this is a high-scoring league, obviously tailored around the offense. You put the guys in motion, you have the wider field. But not a surprising contest here tonight when you base it on these are two of the top defenses in all of the league. Allen from the gun on second and ten. 
trying to scramble out of trouble. Larry Ruck chases him down. He goes down in front of Willie Pless and number 46. That is Malvin Hunter. You know what, Mike? That was supposed to be a little shovel pass play, but that time they had number 32, Bruce Perkins, on the play. Here we're going to see Walter Wilson come down the field. I don't know what he's trying to do here. It looks like he's trying to block because the play was supposed to be a shovel pass to the fullback, but the play never developed because they had the fullback and were actually holding him, keeping him out of the play. Tenth punt of the night for Pete Gardere. Gizmo at the 36. Henry Gizmo Williams. End over end kick. Hits the turf at the 37. On one bounce. Williams finds a seam. Gets back to the 46. A return of 10 on the play. 43-yard kick by Pete Gardere. You know, I've been playing in the CFL. It's kind of like playing the, the green monster down at uh, Fenway Park down there because you have to judge the ball so much at, as a punt return. And you, and you saw that last play there where Gizmo Williams ran right underneath the ball, picked it up like a ground ball or, or a bad hop, runs underneath it and gets about 10 yards out of the play. Another Memphis player down. Looks to be Daryl Ford, number 26. Now Edmondson coming off the bye week. Looking to go to 11 and 5. Number two in the CFL offensively with 51 touchdowns this year. Memphis and their managing general partner head coach, Pepper Rogers. Looking to see if Daryl Ford is okay. Two time off CFL linebacker. Ford began his career in 91 with the Argonauts. Led the league in tackles in 91 with 155. Played under Adam Rita there, who is an assistant head coach now with the Mad Dogs. So I think Adam was probably sitting in a big meeting with leather chairs going. Like to have this guy on our football team if we get that opportunity. Oh yeah, you want to have a guy like that on your football team. You see, he's led the CFL in tackles in 1991 with 155 tackles. Looks a little groggy right now. He must have got hit in the head or something like that. And sometimes that happens as a football player. You stick your head in there pretty often. That time, Daryl Ford probably coming up short end of the stick that time. For those of you interested in the baseball score, Seattle beats Cleveland five to two. Big unit. <laughs> Andy Johnson and the Cincinnati Reds were defeated 5 to 1, so the Braves lead that series 3 love. Greg Maddox goes to the hill and handcuffs that very powerful Reds offense, which has really been handcuffed the whole series, to extra inning heartbreakers at Riverfront and then the loss tonight in Atlanta. Bell, under pressure, dumps it off to Eric Blunt. He has a lead block, scampers up towards the 55, down at the 54. I think he got the first down before Michael Armstrong got to him. Eric Blunt in the backfield once again. He's been a big part of this offense this evening. This time he's going to fake the draw play and then go out on a little screen play. Waits for his blocking, picks up the first down. Actually, he's about a yard short of the first down. So they give it to Michael Souls, the big running back, and pick it up this play. Under two minutes remaining. In the third quarter here in Edmonton. Bell. Gives to Blunt. He's inside the 50 to the 48. A gain of four. It'll bring up a second and long six. Little by little, Edmonton seems to be gelling offensively. They're just not putting it all together enough to move the football way down the field. But they're picking up first downs as opposed to Memphis, who's been two and out as frequently as we can see. They must be doing something on the offensive line because every time you turn around, somebody from the Mad Dogs is on the ground. Bell with time. Baker, great defensive play made by Damian Lyons, avoids the reception by Baker in the first down for the Eskimos. There is a flag on the field. I think they're going to call Damian Lyons for pass interference. There's a referee right in front of it that didn't call anything. He had his arm around him. Unintentional. Memphis number three. Ten-yard penalty. First down. 
And see, those are the times when you when you want to have a meeting because you had an official standing about 10 yards further down the field who didn't call anything, probably had a better view. They had another official call a penalty. Actually, I thought it was a good play by Damian Lyons. 19 penalties total in the game. Blunt on first down. Up near the 30-yard line, about two yards shy of crossing the chains again. And as this football game goes on, the Memphis Mad Dogs are getting very tired on defense because their offense isn't getting any first downs. They're not doing anything on first down, which is heading up second and long. Another first down for the Eskimos, driving the football, aided by the pass interference call. And Michael Souls pick up another first down as Armstrong, Bates, and teammates brought him down. They spot it now inside the 30-yard line, first and 10. Quick hit to Blunt. He's got running room. Touchdown, Eskimos! Eric Blunt on the quick hit, the second major of the game for Edmonton. What a nice play by Eric Blunt. He's going to come out of the backfield and actually end up in the slot and go and do a little quick slant pattern. Bell's going to hit him right in stride. He doesn't break stride going in for the touchdown. See, Blunt's already out there in the slot. That's where he's supposed to be. He's already outside the tackle now. Curran Bell's just going to go back and release the football as soon as possible. No one's covering him. Doesn't break stride. Nice cutback move right there in for the touchdown. That was the last play of the third quarter. Eric Blunt. Impressive tonight. The second major of the game for the Eskimos. Fleming to make it 17 to 10. On the last play of the third quarter, Blunt on the quick hit goes 29 yards for the score. Coming back for the fourth. There's a whole new spin in store at Camelot Music. Camelot has all your favorite home entertainment essentials, including home from Blessed Union of Souls. Let me be and outside from David Bowie. The latest releases from Blessed Union of Souls and David Bowie, specially priced at all Camelot Music locations. Camelot Music, it's home entertainment with a whole new spin. Oh, isn't that cute? What? what? You guys are like the three bears. You're double whopper, whopper, whopper junior, bing, bang, boom. I'm hungry, so what? Well, nothing just sort of struck me as funny. So what are you saying? I'm like the mama bear? <laughs> A Whopper value meal for any size appetite. Starting at $1.99 every day at Burger King. That's getting your burgers worth. Hey, uh, baby bear, you gonna finish those fries? Yes. Ooh, somebody needs a nap. <clears throat> <laughs> Do you love beer? Can you name the four basic ingredients of beer? Have you ever saved a really cool beer bottle? If you could only have one thing in your refrigerator, what would it be? How many different languages can you order a beer in? Have you ever thought you might try brewing your own beer? Do you love beer? When Dave Thomas created Wendy's spicy chicken filet sandwich, he said, if we're going to make it spicy, well, it's a start. Let's really make it spicy. Now we're getting closer. So he seasoned a whole chicken breast filet by adding his own special blend of pepper and spices. And he kept on seasoning until it was perfect. Bingo. Come and try Wendy's spicy chicken filet sandwich because when you're hot, you're hot. Happy man right there, Eric Blunt, the youngster. Out of North Carolina, 5'9", 196-pound running back, and he has been very effective this evening. And very busy. <laughs> Haven't seen a kickoff in quite some time. Taken at the 12. With running room, good return out to the 33. Floyd on the return. We're going to take another look at that touchdown. 
You see a defensive back there. He looks a little confused. He's going to move back into the inside of the field. And they're going to try to go out and cover Blunt with a linebacker. You see the defensive back move inside. And they're going to try to sneak that linebacker in there too late. Blunt has a touchdown. Damon Bardo, 59, was the linebacker. You see Kerwin Bell celebrating. Actually still standing on his feet. He should be pretty shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Damon. Incomplete. Through the hands of Walter Wilson. And Reed had the coverage. And so you can also tell the difference between the CFL and the National Football League. Walter Wilson would get a letter from the league because his shirt's out. That's a $50 fine. Is that right? That's right. You get a letter, and they'll find you 50 bucks. It's not a love letter, is it? No, it's not. You never got one because you were a well-tailored man, right? I got, I got, I got those things having my socks down. Another sack. Big man Leroy Blue gets into the defensive backfield. Both these teams impressive this year with sacks. And add another one to Leroy Blue's year. Damon Allen back to pass again. He has not had a lot of time to pass today. Blue actually with a power rush there. Knocks Damon Allen down again. And tell you what, the Memphis Mad Dogs are really struggling on offense, especially in the second half. Ninth sack of the year for Leroy, second of the night for the Eskimos. Five of the six Memphis sacks belong to 55 Tim Cofield. Big loss, punting situation. Gardair. Almost blocked. Williams at the 48. Williams in to Memphis territory. 14 yard return for Gizmo Williams. Field position very important in this ball game. Normally you have a defensive ball game. One team starts to gradually take over. They actually start winning the, the field position battle. And right now, Edmonton Eskimos winning the field position battle. They take over deep in Memphis territory. Attendance tonight, 30,111. The Mem actually, the, the, the Eskimos lead the league in attendance, averaging over 31,000 fans per game. And don't tell me, we got another guy down. Yep. You know, Mike, I started to talk about this a little earlier, and I, 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 I believe there was an official's call, but I think the reason why so many people are sliding around and having a lot of leg injuries today is because normally during this time of year, the grass starts to die. You see in the middle of the field, it's kind of turning a little yellow, and so the roots are not as deep, and so your cleats tend to give out on you a little bit. So I think that might be one of the reasons why some of the wide receivers especially are slipping down on their pass rushes, or excuse me, pass routes. Injured players okay, walks off the field. It was number 26, Daryl Ford. Good field position for the Eskimos. A busy man, scoots through traffic and a big gainer. Blunt looking towards the end zone, hauled down from behind by Don Smith. Big gain of 30 yards on the play for Eric Blunt. Eric Blunt once again with a nice cutback move to the right side of the field. He's running very well right now. His offensive line blocking extremely well. He gets dragged down from behind. Otherwise, they just save the touchdown right there. On first down, a couple of yards gain. Bring up a second down situation. Blunt the ball carrier once again. In his six starts this year, he has averaged 258.7 yards a game in total all-purpose yards. They dish it to the same man. That's why they go to him frequently. Another first down. Watch out. Corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Eric Blunt. On cue. He is unbelievable. He's having... Probably one of the better ball games he's had all year. You know, sometimes running back, especially it looks like a back like Eric 
Blunt gets stronger as the game goes on. He's running better, picking up his blocks better, doing everything a lot better in the second half. You'll see a fake up the middle by the fullback, freezes the linebackers in the middle of the field, and Blunt's going to run out to the side. Uh, just a little swing pad. He throws it out there. His lineman is in front of him. Nice cutback move. Great speed, makes it into the end zone. He's getting stronger as this game goes on. Couple of good blocks downfield, and Blunt has his second touchdown reception of the night. Fleming misses the convert, and now they dish it. Then dish it again. <laughs> and they blow it down. Not yet. Football still squirting free. Only my friends in the CFL <laughs> on ESPN2. Australian rules football, wasn't it? Well, that last guy on about the 20-yard line dished it to no one because there was nobody there. <laughs> so they fail on the convert attempt, and our score is 23 to 10. That was a bad snap there. The ball does not get down in time. Number 18, Glenn Harper tried to set the ball up there, but he just wasn't able to do it. And there's that dish off to no one right there. Another look at the touchdown. Corey Blunt goes in for his second touchdown of the evening. Miramax Films asks the question, what do two hitmen, one girlfriend, a boxer, and a secret suitcase have in common? I don't know. That's a good question. The answer is they're all part of the most entertaining film of the year. This doesn't sound like the usual mindless chit-chat. <laughs> ah, you... you won't know the facts until you see the fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yummy. Rated R. In 1992, two great heavyweight champions turned in award-winning performances. When it was over, Riddick Bowe was the new champion. A year later, there was a sequel. It was another classic. This time, Evander Holyfield got his revenge. Bowe and Holyfield will fight again. Only one can be the best heavyweight in the world. Live from Caesars Palace on pay-per-view, Saturday, November 4th. Second touchdown in just a couple of minutes, a 29-yarder followed up by a 19-yarder. During the last break, he said to the camera people and the fans at home, I got another one in there for you. Don't know who he was giving it to, but his promise comes true. He said he wasn't finished, and he certainly wasn't. Once again, taking a pass play and scoring. He's had a magnificent ball game, especially in the second half. Like I said earlier, he's one of those running backs that probably get stronger as the game goes on. Nearing those numbers we talked about, the 258 average, already 202 total yards tonight and a couple of scores. And for those of you wondering why the Memphis Mad Dogs were throwing the ball around so much, you get two points if you score on the missed point after touchdown. And as we've learned tonight, Darren seems to think that one and two point scores are very important. Now, you weren't saying that when it was 10 to 10. No, I was pretty quiet. <laughs> Twelve straight seasons with a winning record. Last losing season, 1971, for this very proud CFL franchise. Lost last year on a last-second field goal in the West semifinal to the BC Lions. Swept BC, enjoyed a bye week, and now hoping to be the number two seed in the North when we begin the CFL playoffs. Full coverage, of course, on ESPN2. Low-lining kick by Fleming. Taken by the up back, Anthony Jordan. Jordan up past the 40 and the 50 to the 51-yard line. Return of 33 yards on the play. As a coach, you have to like Anthony Jordan because he does not mess around a whole bunch. Here's, a, here's another view of the touchdown. You're going to see the fullback, number 32, Michael Souls, is going to... He's going to run up the middle as for a fake. He's going to draw in the linebackers. And, and actually, the tackle is going to actually go out and hook the defensive end. He hooks number 55, Tim Cofield, And then number 35, Eric Blunt, simply just waltzes into the end zone. Memphis needs to get the offense going a bit. That'll help with another flag on the play. If the play sticks, it'll be a first down for the big receiver, 89, Sean Collins. But you alluded to it earlier, partner. We'll await the call in a moment. And it looks like it's going to go against Memphis. 
the defense of the Mad Dogs has been on the field the whole second half because Damon and company have been two and out. That's true. You can't keep your defense on the field the entire second half. I don't think they've had a first down. Receiver. Memphis 89, 10 yards. I don't think they've had the first down after like the, the first couple of minutes in the third quarter. And you can't leave a defense on the field that long as well as their defense has been playing. They've got guys dropping like flies right now. And I don't know if it's from exhaustion or the fact that he has been to, or, the, or the fact that the Eskimos are starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. But whatever it is, Damon has to come up with some kind of way to move the football. Collins was open because he was ineligible downfield. Allen pumps over the middle, complete. Catch made on the play by Al Shipman near the first down, a gain of 18 yards on the play. On the first and 20. Singor Mobley made the stop defensively. Mobley doing a good job of holding him short of the first down. Alfred Shipman dragging him, trying to pick up the first down, just about a yard short. Second and a long one. Football on the 50 of the Eskimos. He'll choose to go to the air. And the pass is incomplete. Defensive play by Darian Hagan. Pass was intended for Sean Collins. Sean Collins coming up complaining a little bit. Thought Darian Hagan was over his back. Officials didn't see it that way. We're going to look and see if Darren Hagen was actually over the back of Sean Collins. And that looks like just a good play by Darian Hagen. <laughs> Sean Collins in shock that time because he thought that was an obvious penalty. Little delay. Second effort will get the first down, but the football hit the turf. The football hit the turf. Edmonton thinks they have it. It doesn't even matter because the ball is short of the first down now. It looked like the first running back had the first yeah, it down. Yeah, sure did. It sure the did. fumble went backwards and it was recovered by the Mad Dogs, but it was short of the first down. Well, it's either going to be loss of downs or a fumble potentially. Number 32, Michael Souls is going to hit it in there. The ball is knocked out, and it's going to actually fall backwards. It's recovered by Memphis, but it's going to be short of the first down. Now, they're going to measure, so I guess they're going to say that There's it's There's no need to Memphis measure. It's football. short. Yep. <laughs> it did look like Perkins had it, though, before he lost the football, and thus the look of disgust on the face of Pepper Rogers. Stop at Pep Boys now for our premium brake service. Our ASE certified technicians will install Raybestos Lifetime Warranty Brakes for only $99.99. Get Lifetime Brakes installed for under $100. Only at Pep Boys. Roll into Pep Boys right now and get a full set of four 70,000-mile tires for just $169. That's any size, any four 70,000-mile tires in stock for just $169 at Pep Boys now. Three out of four new car radiators are made of aluminum. Thin, lightweight, and under tremendous stress. This year, over 400,000 aluminum radiators will hit, corrode, and fail. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone. Prestone antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone Zone of dual protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Don't put your car at risk. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. Busy men, the punters, that's for sure. Why he needs to stay loose on a night like tonight, I don't know. These guys have had plenty of work. Yeah, they've had an awful lot of work. And right now, the Memphis Mad Dogs playing more like the Memphis Puppies in this third and fourth quarter. Their defense has been on the field an awful long time. And for those of you tuning in late, their defense played very well in the first half. They've had some nice touchdown runs by Eric Blunt in the fourth quarter. But I'll tell you what. This uh, Edmonton Eskimos offensive line is starting to take over the line of scrimmage. Memphis is yet to be close to scoring a major. Just three field goals by Nick Maestrom in a single. Our score is 23 to 10. Bell and company have scored on their last two possessions. They're adding on. 
good gainer. Football comes free, but they're going to say the ground forced the fumble. Reception made by the veteran Nick Mazzoli. We'll call it about a 19, 20 yard gain. Nick Mazzoli goes airborne at the tackle right here. You see a nice hit by number three, Damon Lyons. Those old guys can't land on their head too much now. Mazzoli in his first year in Edmonton. On first down, who else? Eric Blunt bowls ahead for four. And that might be his shortest run of the second half. Got the quick pitter patter steps going, and he has been so effective. In the second half, it has been all Edmonton scoring. 37 yard field goal by Fleming, two touchdowns by that man. Play action. Tried to dump it off to Blunt. It was knocked down. May have been Rodney Harding, number 77, or his teammate Stephen Bates, number 92. Yeah, look like big number 77. Rodney Harding got his hands up and blocked that pass. And he's lucky he knocked it down because they had a. Here you're going to see him come in here. It looks like Bates is going to actually try and get to the quarterback, but it's actually Harding, number 77, who knocks the ball down. They had a screen set up to. The man of the hour, Eric Blunt, once again. Fleming on to attempt the 47-yard field goal. Made the 37, missed the 54. He's 11 of 20 from 40-plus. 11 of 21 counting tonight. This one seems to have the distance. It is up, but it is wide. Will they concede the single? Yes. A single for Edmonton makes it 24 to 10. Fleming misses from outside of 40. We return to Edmonton after this. I don't see him. I think we're safe. Of course we're safe. We're in my Subaru Outback. I know the world's first sport utility wagon. This beauty's got dual airbags, full-time all-wheel drive. It's more stable in the town than a blazer. What else you got? Better braking than an explorer. That's my Subaru Outback. The world's first sport utility wagon. From the creator of T2 and Aliens. Straight from the cerebral cortex. Imagine you witness a murder. He recalls it all. And gives it to you. Through the killer's eyes. This guy is one of your contacts. You know how high up the food chain this thing goes. Now, imagine you are the next victim. The issue isn't whether you're paranoid, Lenin. The issue is whether you're paranoid enough. <laughs> Strange Days, directed by Catherine Bigelow, rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. Wrong. It's a shampoo and precise blend of several conditioners, individually balanced for every kind of hair. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. I can feel it. New Pert Plus in five precise new formulas. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been kind of a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting a weave and you bob. Mm hmm They're thinking zig, you zag. Yeah. You're a bold man. The Whopper. It always tastes great because it's always fixed your way. With fries and a drink for just two ninety nine dollars Every day at Burger King. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rut mobile. No ruts, no glory. It's time for the NHL. So when they ice it, ice it, hook it, hook it, save it, and score it, score it, you'll need to know. NHL Tonight on ESPN2, Tuesday through Saturday at 11.30 p.m. Midnight Madness, presented by Pizza Hut tomorrow, midnight Eastern ESPN, 1 o'clock Eastern on the Dukes. College basketball season kicked off from Maryland with Susie Culver and Dick Vitale, Virginia. Bill Raftery, Michigan with Larry Conry. And on ESPN2, preseason number one, Kansas will have Digger and Bob Carpenter there. Michael Jordan will be along with Clark Kellogg in Minnesota. And at Mississippi State, Dan Bonner. Midnight Madness presented by Pizza Hut. And there is some madness here in Edmonton with those hats. Yeah, there's some madness. All right. You know, everyone that has those hats has those little glasses that goes with it, too. It must be <laughs> something mandatory about that. <laughs> Those glasses really set those oh, hats off. Did you, get a, did you get a bowl of soup with that hat? <laughs> From the 39, Allen trailing by 14. Complete over the middle. The big man breaks a tackle. Still moves ahead, has a block. 
Number 89, Sean Collins. Good gainer into Edmonton territory. 23 yards on the play. Finally forced out of bounds by the defensive back. Sean Collins is a big wide receiver and he just runs over. It looks like number 26, Glenn Rogers, a defensive back. Matter of fact, Glenn Rogers still laying on the football field. And by the way, Rodgers out of Memphis State in his third season. All played here in Edmonton last year. 50, 50 tackles, couple interceptions, and a West All-Star, as you saw two seasons ago, from Sacramento, California. We've seen an awful lot of people on the ground today with little injuries. I don't think many of them have been serious, aside from Alex Gordon, because I think he was the only one that was taken off the field. Gordon got hit in the side of the knee, the rookie out of Cincinnati in the first half, and has not returned, left the field on crutches. And you said Sean Collins, big guy, number 89, the rookie out of Northern Arizona, 6'3", 210 pounder, joined the Mad Dogs late after being released by the Philadelphia Eagles. And you know what? I don't think they're used to seeing wide receivers quite that big in this league. Most of the guys, 5'9", 5'10", about 175, 180 pounds. Then you got a big guy like number 89, Sean Collins, running at you at 6'3", 200, over 200 pounds. Now this is a kid, uh, Sean Collins we're speaking of, Glenn Rogers still being attended to, who was a first round choice of the Falcons in 89 and as a rookie, caught over 800 yards and passes, had a couple of touchdowns in his first season in the NFL with the Falcons. Well, we definitely know that it wasn't the size that kept it from sticking around in the league, but uh, tell you what, he's an awesome side out here watching some of these big wide receivers running around. He's one of the bigger wide receivers in the league, and he makes defensive backs pay to tackle it. Len Rogers knows that firsthand. We are in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Commonwealth Stadium. Mike Goldberg, Darren Nelson. Football game sees Edmonton leading by 14, 24 to 10, with eight minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Damon Allen in the offense of Memphis, stagnant, especially in the second half. Shipman goes into motion on the right side. Allen goes over the middle, wide open. First down and more, the reception made by Gary Morris. Morris finally tripped up by Singor Mobley. No one appreciates the fact that the Mad Dogs are moving the ball more than their defense. Damon Allen back there sets him in the pocket real nice, finds Gary Morris over the middle for a nice game. Best field position in quite some time. 31 of Edmonton. Allen again, Morris again. Inside the 10. Hit by Darian Hagan. A 22-yard gain for Gary Morris, who was seldom used last year in Hamilton with the T-Cats. Here we're going to see Damon Allen setting up in the pocket. Gets real nice protection on this play. Pick up a nice blitz there. He makes throws a bullet over the middle to Gary Morris. They stop him at about the 10-yard line. Help on the play by John Kalen. A two good receptions by Morris. And inside the red zone, finally, the Mad Dogs. Football spotted on the nine. First and goal. Blitz. End zone. Goal post got in the way. Shipman tried to break on the football, but the blitz was coming hard by number 19, John Kalen, the safety. Yeah, John Kalen did not allow Damon Allen to actually set up on that play. And you're going to see number 17, Joseph Horn, get knocked down by Hensi Charles, a defensive back from the Edmonton Eskimos. And that's legal in this league. You can do that. Majorly important play here, partner, with six minutes and some change on the clock, down by two scores. Second and goal from the nine. Allen, incomplete pressure again, same man, John Kalen. They brought the safety back into the backfield, and Morris was unable to complete his route. Allen had to alter the pass. You're seeing John Kalen kind of sneak up to the line of scrimmage, and he's going to blitz untouched for the second time in a row. You figure somebody would figure out that he's up there to do something, and he blitzed for the second time, forces Allen to get rid of the ball. Now, no field goal here. They're going to go for it on third and goal. They've got to have the major. 
from the nine. Towards the end zone, incomplete. No, touchdown. Part of me, Sean Collins broke through and made the reception for the touchdown. Collins used the goal post to shield himself from the defender, broke free, and got the major. Well, you see, once they finally pick up the blitz, Damon Allen is allowed to sit back in the pocket and actually find a wide receiver, and Sean Collins gets wide open over the middle of the field. Big play on third and goal. And they are going to go for the two-point conversion. No, they're going to kick it. No, they're going to decide to go for the kick. Lined up for two, we thought at first, but now they'll just go for the convert, and they get it to make it 24 to 17. There's another look at Damon Allen throwing a nice bullet pass over the middle to Sean Collins. I don't know how he got so wide open. That's a nice catch by Sean Collins. Ball actually just a tad bit behind him, and he finishes it off with an explanation point. Well, it was Collins and Gary Morris, the wide receivers effectively used on that drive, the first major of the night for the Mad Dogs of Memphis, Tennessee in their first year in the league, and it makes our score 24 to 17, plenty of time remaining, 550 in the fourth quarter. And as bad as Memphis has been playing in this second half, they're still in this ball game. Not a doubt. And that is because their mad dog defense has been pretty darn effective also. Yeah, their defense has played very well, though. This, their offense gave them a chance to rest. Yeah. So I'm sure that the, the defense is very appreciative of that, especially right now, late in this ball game. throwing for just over 200 yards on the night. One touchdown, one interception, completing exactly 50% of his passes. Maestrom to kick it. Low bouncing kick. Taken by Blunt at the 23. Look at the acceleration. Watch out. Cutting towards the outside, Blunt all the way up to the 53. 30 yard return for Eric Blunt, and when he put on the afterburners, it was bye bye to the guys trying to chase him to the outside. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, Gizmo Williams is a real good returner, but right now I'd be trying to keep the ball away from Mr. Blunt. He's been playing very well, especially in this second half. He's a very dangerous football player. I keep the ball out of his hands. Eskimos first and 10. Ball so good field position for the Eskimos who have scored on their last couple of possessions. Into the flat, Mazzoli. Mazzoli brought down on the play. Mazzoli doing a good job of struggling for extra yards. He's got to come up about half a yard short. He may have the first down. Looks like he may be just a tad bit short. They're going to measure. I take it back, Mike. He's got the first down. What do you think? I think it was a favorable spot, partner. I'll go with you on this one. <laughs> Real generous spot on that play. Yep. First down. First down, Eskimos, Nick Mazzoli. Gain of 10.3. <laughs> Got it by the strike. That's right. So the you know what? Pardon me. Sorry, Mike. You know what? That was the biggest adjustment I had to make coming into the pros was the fact that there was no stripe on the ball anymore. I had such a hard time picking the ball up my first couple of weeks playing. Blunt up the middle. How he found that hole, I do not know, but he advances the football to the 40, a gain of seven on the play. If you would have stayed in the CFL, you wouldn't have had to make that adjustment well, or come now. to the CFL. Well, yeah, I know now. Had and I knew known Campbell wanted you. that Edmonton wanted me to play for him, I would have gladly done it. You're going to see Blunt tiptoeing through the line. Nice cut there. His offensive line is doing an extremely good job in the second half. Nine years, the Minnesota Viking, Darren Nelson. Mike Goldberg from Commonwealth Stadium. Four minutes, 17 seconds remain in our fourth quarter. Bell, delay, blunt, 
Scampers, first down, Eskimos. And you know, Mike, one name we have not caught much in this second half is big Tim Cofield. He's been very quiet after recording five sacks in the first half. Ron Lancaster said, <laughs> what are Don't you going to do? Him. Yeah, we're going to try to block him in the second half. That's They're what doing we're going to try to job. do. Yeah, they sure are. Well, Blunt with the running attack has kept that defense off balance a bit, too, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really kept the defense off balance. But, you know, it's been basically his pass receiving. You know, those, you know, those short pass patterns he's been running are almost like runs because they're not very dangerous for a quarterback to dump those passes off. And he's doing a real good job of following his blocking and picking up the extra yards. He's also got some real good speed. When well, they're going to say this time short of the first down. Third down. And a short one. Taking a chance here by going for it, looks like. Got the one-yard cushion. Watch Bell on the keeper. Nope, they'll give it to the back man, and he gets the first down easily. A lot of teams will go with the keeper. Lancaster says, hey, we got three guys in the backfield. Give me a good surge. We'll get the first down, and again, they use the defensive standout. Big number 39, Willie Pless. Well, you know, people have to remember that in the CFL, you have to line up at least a yard off the football. So the offense has a real big advantage with his third and one. Lancaster's football team has the ball now on the 34. Pless with his second first down in the contest. <laughs> first and 10. Under pressure, dumped off to Blunt. Yes, who? Into the open field near the 24-yard line. A gain of 10 or 11 on the play. Edmonton moving with the football again. We have reached the three-minute warning here in the second half. Please step on the scale. They fled in terror, horrified by the very sight of it. The cable box. Run for your lives! But one man did not run. He understood its awesome power. The Cable Box. The only way to get an extra channel of HBO at no extra cost and pay-per-view. So don't delay. Call now. The Cable Box. Welcome it into your home. She was a working artist and, uh, and a highly acclaimed artist. She was the first one to really free me up. I think she did know how much impact she had on me. You're unique, you're special. You only need to hear that once. Everyone has a teacher they'll never forget. Meet 36 of them when the Walt Disney Company and McDonald's present the American Teacher Awards during a one-day free preview Wednesday, November 1st. I think that anyone that inspires you and, and helps you be the best you can be is your friend. Was it black and white? When black and white? It's a whole new ball game on ESPN2. And it's a whole new attitude at Northwestern where the Wildcats are entertaining Rose Bowl hosts. This week, quarterback Steve Schnurr leads Northwestern against the Badgers in a Big Ten brawl. Wisconsin takes on Northwestern Saturday at 12.30. The CFL on ESPN2 is being brought to you by Duracell Batteries. You can't top the copper top. By Coors Light. Ship coal to reserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light. Tap the Rockies. And by Pep Boys. For quality parts, accessories, and service, come to Pep Boys, America's automotive super center. 24-17. We've reached the three-minute warning here in the fourth quarter. 2.53 remains. Edmonton trying to hold on. Mike Goldberg, Darren Nelson. We've seen a good defensive football game. And the one thing we've seen, I think, in the CFL is an improvement in the defensive play this year. It's not up and down offense anymore. Well, no, it's not. Another thing that's a big trend in the CFL right now is to get guys that are linebacker size and put them out there at defensive end and let them rush the passer. And they've got a lot of guys in this league doing that right now. And in the second half, an adjustment obviously made to control Timmy Cofield in that big run rush and the big sack masting team of the Memphis Mad Dogs. Well, you know, the coach said they're going to try and block him, <laughs> and they have blocked him the second half. Yeah, no question about it, trying to hold on for the victory. Memphis, though, in trouble as Blunt and company continue to move the football. They are inside the 25-yard line. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that might be the shortest game that Eric Blunt has had here in the second half, only gaining two yards on that play. They sure haven't been able to figure him out in the second half. No, they haven't. He's done a real good job. You know, they've done a real good job of mixing the ball up with him. Draws, trap plays, screens, Statue of Liberty plays. He's all over the place. Second and a long nine. Bell looking end zone. His receiver got tied up with the defensive man. The receiver got tied up in the backfield, and it broke off the pattern. Eddie Brown was trying to squirt free. Bell paid the price. Yes, and he did. It, and it'll be a field goal attempt for Fleming, an important field goal to push it to a two-score lead. You're going to see Rodney Harding rushing the passer right here. Curran Bell already limping from a, from a prior play. He gets ridden down. A little extracurricular activity there on that. Looked like a bull roping contest or something as he drives Bell's head down in the grass. This could be a costly loss for the Mad Dogs. They'd fall to 8-8. Eight and eight. As Fleming tries to push the Edmonton lead to 10 with 207 remaining. From 30 yards out, Fleming's kick is up, and it is good. A 10-point Eskimo lead. Fleming good from 30. Birmingham and San Antonio came into tonight a game in hand on Memphis, trying to fight for that spot. Remainder of the season sees Birmingham at Shreveport tonight, then at San Antonio, home against Edmonton. Memphis owns the tie break against Birmingham. They've lost twice to the Texans. They are at Toronto, home against Edmonton. San Antonio plays their final two games at home, Shreveport and Birmingham. First and 10 from the 35. Allen dumps it into the flat. Gary Anderson seldom used tonight near a first down. Larry Ruck made the stop. 27-17 with 157 remaining. Right now, the Mad Dogs may be looking for some fresh bodies about now. They've had so many guys leave this football game. Flag, Allen, dumps, Anderson working towards the sideline, gain of six. Allen Anderson. Bless and company over to force him out of bounds. Malvin Hunter, 46 in on the play, along with Larry Ruck, 47. Now, there have been a lot of penalties in this ball game. The game's been pretty sloppily played as far as penalties are concerned. Been some nice hard hitting in this ball game, though. Illegal procedure, no end on the right side of the line. Memphis, five yard penalty. Those are the ones you can't have when you're trying to come back late and win a football game. No, you don't have time to suffer setbacks like that. They're 10 points down right now. They need a quick score to get back in this ball game. So they march it back. Brings up the first and 15 from the gun, Allen. Pressure. He's going to be hauled down for a big loss inside the 20-yard line. Tony Woods, number 91, gets the sack. That time, Allen relying a little too much on his speed and quickness. Remember, he does have a knee brace on, so he is not quite as quick as he is normally. He's going to get run down by Woods. You can see the wide receivers actually kind of open that time. They're blocking down the field. Damon Allen sacked by Woods. A loss of 21 yards on the play. NHL tonight, Bill Pito standing by. Big win for Detroit. 9-0 final. Those highlights and many others. Second and 35 incomplete. That is coming up at the bottom of the hour live on ESPN2. And then don't forget tomorrow night, NHL hockey, 7.30 from Maple Leaf Garden. Saturday night, two of the original six, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the New York Rangers, Mark Messier, Doug Gilmore and company. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, followed again by the busiest man in television, Bill Pito. <laughs> moves over to the NFL studios on Sunday. I think he's my idol. Is he your idol? Yeah, why not? He's probably listening, so let's say that. <laughs> there you go. Try and get some more work. And then Allen falls down on third down. This game's going to belong to the Eskimos with a minute 15 left. 
think that might be the icing on the cake. Damon Allen once again falling down, slipping down on this football field. We talked about this earlier in the ball game. The grass starting to die this time of year. Roots not very deep. Damon Allen trying to cut. Feet will not hold up. Willie Pless enjoying it. All right, <laughs> Willie, do a little jig for us. That's the Mike Goldberg dance. I don't know what that is. Bully and I work on that <laughs> during the week. When he hears the music, Goldberg hears the music, that's how he dances. Big night for Willie Pless in the Eskimo defense, holding Memphis to just 17 points, just one major. See if they can add on to the offensive totals. Why not give it to this man? Blunt up the middle, inside the five. Touchdown, Eskimos. Third touchdown of the night for Eric Blunt. Edmonton's going to go to 11 and 5. And Mike, the mark of a good running back is how many people they leave sitting on the field at the end of a run. You're going to see Eric Blunt run. There's two. There's three, there's four, five, there's six, still going all the way in for the touchdown. There's a tire defense out there, but I tell you what, Eric Blunt has something to do with that. They found themselves a running star here in Edmonton. His name is Eric Blunt. Edmonton leads 34 to 17. The Eskimos are on fire. Okay, Mike, I'll admit it. That point wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good for the night. You got that right, partner. 289 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns. Eric Blunt. They've got a great chance of going all the way. Yeah, they do. They've got a real good defense. I think they need to work on their offense a little bit more as far as consistency, especially in their passing game. But I'll tell you what, number 35, Eric Blunt, continues to play the way he's been playing tonight. They're going to be a real tough team to beat. They took care of BC twice. Calgary has not played well the last couple of weeks offensively. They've gotten the victory still, but they haven't been as sharp as they were the first couple of weeks under Jeff Garcia. And Edmonton seems to be peaking at the right time. Great game, the overtime win against BC, but a decisive win in Vancouver the week before. And this team is on a roll, moving their record up to 11 and 5. Don't forget they won the Great Cup two years ago with Damon Allen at quarterback. And you know what? This organization simply knows how to win, too. They're very dangerous for having it's very dangerous to have an organization like this. Qualified for the playoffs for a CFL record 24th consecutive year this in it, this CFL season. They do it tonight. They are the San Francisco 49ers of the Canadian Football League when you look at 11 great cups. Actually, they're doing a little better than the 49ers. Yeah, you got that right. Well, they had those great years with Warren Moon at quarterback and, of course, the big defense and our good friend Danny Kepley who does games here on ESPN and also the CBC Network in Canada. Played from 75 to 1984. He's one of the many numbers retired here. Number 42, Danny Kepley, and the great defense for so many years in Edmonton. They won consecutive great cups in 78, 79, 80, 81, and 82. Allen, under a minute remains, sacked again. Benny Goods. So Benny Goods got close to a sack. <laughs> that time Damon Allen getting rid of the ball at the last minute to avoid a sack. You know, this is a part of the ball game where, especially with, if you're a Memphis Mad Dog, we just, we just want to say, okay, it's over. Let's just get rid of this last 56 seconds and go on in. They're not going to win this football game. Be a long trip home to Tennessee. From the gun, Allen slipped for a second and another sack. Add to the totals, guys. Malvin Hunter. And this is the part of the ball game where those defensive linemen really like that because they know that the Memphis Mad Dogs have to pass the football. That time, Malvin Hunter gets in the backfield, drops. Damon 
Allen again. Fifth sack of the night for the Eskimos. Brings up a third down situation. The clock is running with 43 seconds remaining in the contest. NHL tonight, Bill Pito standing by, bottom of the hour. Field has his receiver. We have not said the name in so long. Joe Horn, the impressive rookie, gets the first down inside Edmonton territory, but it is going to be much too little too late. Yeah, and as I tell you what, Joseph Horn, 1,206 yards coming into this ball game and four TDs has been shut down very well by the Eskimos defense. for his life has to stop caught from behind by Leroy Blue number 89 now 10 seconds remaining clock is stopped Edmonton is going to move to 11 and 5 they have control of second place in the north and Memphis is going to fall to 8 and 8 with two games remaining trying to fight for that two or three seed in the south fighting with Birmingham and San Antonio we were a game ahead of them in the standings as we entered the night. Thirty-four seventeen, our score. Lots of hockey. Bill Pito and NHL tonight coming up next here on ESPN two. Nine years with the Minnesota Vikings. Darren enjoyed doing the game with you this evening, partner. Well, thank you very much. I had a real good time watching the ball game, and I'm glad they started to score finally, too. I've always heard this game. It's a wide open type of a game. Now you can admit to me that the point didn't mean anything. I, d I already did that. Well, I just want to hear it again. <laughs> Complete up the field to Gary Morris. And that is the final play of the contest. The Edmonton Eskimos win decisively. 34 to 17 the story number 35 Eric Blunt three touchdowns on the night for Darren Nelson I'm Mike Goldberg saying so long everybody consult a physician before starting this or any exercise program come on five more Last two. Flex of the air. That's my warm up set. Hi, everybody. Sean and I are getting ready to train chest today.